Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Carl's Roller Coaster Podcast. Beers, burrs, beers, man. Beers, beers man. Beers, beers. <laughs> Punk IPA. Punk right? IPA, yeah. They're doing a bit of uh, merchandising for Brewdog for free. Oh, yeah, just, just If they it. want to sponsor us, there. if they want to sponsor us, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. Uh, it would be actually a great sponsorship. Cash, not beers. Well, <laughs> beers as well. <laughs> Uh, right, I think Fish. yeah, I think I think that was quite actually funny to start on that way. So uh, I'm just gonna <laughs> crack on from it. Cool. Um, bit of a formal intro to my friend Jack, but yeah, well, uh, Jack been acting at the age. <laughs> Jack began. Boo. Huh? Mo- <laughs> Jack began acting at the age of seventeen. Yeah. His film and television credits include playing the guest lead character Kevin Garvey in the BBC series Silent Witness and the lead in Sean Buckley's Polar Bat for film for Inflammable Films. On stage, Jack has taken part in numerous National Theatre Connections, plays and various showcases. He also has a love for performance poetry from which he has gone and write and perform his own material. Born and raised in Pimlico, Southwest London, he's an exceptionally keen boxer with 27 competitive bouts to date. Without any formal training, Jack begin. Fuck, I can't believe it. <laughs> Fuck, screwed up everything. <laughs> right, we can start again. Fuck. Well, I'm glad it happened actually at the yeah, very yeah. start. Oh, fuck. Where, where is that intro from? Uh, I got information from online and just, oh, cool, cool. just put like... And you'll add like I just kill and Peaky Blinders and things. Like that. That's that's how we're gonna get to it. Yeah, to yeah, that's the beginning of the conversation basically. That was take one. Take that was one. take one. <laughs> take one. <laughs> Did you call it on video? <clears throat> it's gonna be like you know when when things uh, go wrong and then you made those videos like oh. Take one, fuck, that's not good. Again, yeah, yeah. take two, fuck, not, not good. Then you get all the footage afterwards and it's a bit of a laugh. End of movie, they actually put that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, should do. We can't have our candid natural start anymore. <laughs> Punk IPA. <laughs> there we go. I can always edit it. I can cut it and edit. All right. This one's going to be okay? Yeah, this one will be fine. This Maybe. one is fine, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know mine, why did Dropped maybe because this is that's not good. Maybe we need another bendy spoon. (laughs) (laughs) Bendy spoon for the mic. Why? (laughs) It's like it lost his. um, How do you call it when? (coughs) <coughs> Fuck, let me just put the bar. Can I see the bio? You can, you of see? course, man. Of course. Come and check it out. Because I know someone, I don't know who, mm. well, they've done me a favour in a way. Like, but someone wrote on, like, on my behalf on my IMDb page. Yeah. I don't know where they. I think they they miss they miss um. What's the word like miss? They basically said like that I'd won however like a half a dozen national titles. Yes, I took that yeah, off. Because yeah. then someone's like half a dozen. That's like impossible in twenty seven fights. Do you know what I mean? But I've been in national championships. Okay. But I haven't won. A, so I'm like it's there. So I mean. I saw that and I was like fuck. I took it there. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm serious. Team box places. There is rule change. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, perfect. <coughs> I just edited it, took bits from here and there, and and he's also left-handed. Imagine, <laughs> <laughs> like, and he's also left-handed. <laughs> and there was really no reason for it to come up. <laughs> <laughs> he also has his other acronym. He goes by the name of Dirk Diggler. Dirk Diggler. And his biggest fear is. Of sharks, believe yes, it or not. Yes, yes. <laughs> Come on, around, Honestly, like, man. Sharks. Why? Snakes. Have you ever seen a shark? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sh- 
sharks... In real life, I mean, do, obviously. I have an irrational fear of a shark, like, being killed by... Being eaten by a shark in a... Like a pool, like a swimming pool, mm. at night. Did you actually... Did yeah. you ever dream about I, that? I, I honestly, in a pool. When I'm in a pool at night, if I was with you in the pool... Yeah. I'd shit myself. I'd be shitting myself. Yeah, but how would the company. shark be in the pool? It's irrational. It's, it's, it's irrational. absolutely irrational. It's an irrational fear. <laughs> it's I also unreal. have, one, have a, a fear of a shark coming out of the bathtub. <laughs> taking me. <laughs> <laughs> I can only... I mean, that's the kind of, of uh, dream I would never... I would never have. Like, yeah. a shark coming out of the bath, like... <laughs> <laughs> Just taking me, fuck, pulling me down. So, oh, shit. I can't believe I didn't record that. But, okay. We can, we can get it in. We can get it in. We can get it in. Cool. <clears throat> Jack began acting at the age of 17. His film and television credits include playing the guest lead character, Kevin Garvey, in the BBC series Silent Witness and the lead in Sean Buckley's Polar Bear for Film 4 Inflammable Films. On stage, Jack has taken part in numerous National Theatre Connections, plays and various showcases. He also has a love for, poor, for performance poetry from which he has gone on to write and perform his own material. Born and raised in Pimlico, Southwest London, he is an exceptionally keen boxer with 27 competitive bouts to date. Without any formal training, Jack's big break came when he took on the lead role of the child psychopath murderer Sam in Channel's, Channel 4's Born to Kill, and just recently as Bonnie Gold on the acclaimed Peaky Blinders series from the BBC. British Vogue hailed him as the fittest boy of 2017. Oh. Welcome to the show, my friend. Yeah, thank, you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, Jack. Thank oh, you for being you. here, yeah. Oh, we already God. cracked a few laughs, didn't we? <laughs> we already did. We, we certainly did. There was a few malfunctions with the uh, equipment. With equipment, it's yeah. Good. It's all good. And we managed to get the... How do you call that again? A bendy spoon. A bendy spoon, yeah. A bendy spoon. That's Can something you explain that we, what it is? Uh, yeah, well, oh, I, 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 yeah, I think we could dive into that straight away. Yeah, please do do me the favor and, and explain what the so. bandy spoon is. It so actually saved my evening. It does. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, essentially, whenever we do, whenever I do self tapes with my friend Joe, we we incorporate this thing where we bend a spoon and we stick blue tack on it, and and literally that's it. We stick our phone on that on that uh, on that bendy spoon and we just put it around the room, <laughs> and we can like do it from anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Stick it on a chair on a. It's it's a very clever idea, and to be honest with you, it should that there should be a device, some sort of device that does that for you. You know, people well, would make money yeah, out of it. Bendy spoon. Bendy spoon. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> gotta make it a little bit more professional. Yeah. And uh, you can actually have a business out of that. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Fuck sakes. Um, <laughs> can't believe this thing. Can't believe it. Fuck sakes. Seriously, why? What's going on? I don't know. My goodness. Fuck. Be annoying if that happened. At Man, like half an hour in. Well, I would carry it's on. Always, yeah. I would carry on. I wouldn't stop. Just, I'm just stopping it just because well, it's early. Yeah. It's early. It's the very <coughs> beginning. And the thing is, <coughs> last well, weekend, know. last weekend I did it, and it was like, not. It didn't happen. So I don't know if I'm doing. I'm not doing anything different than, than that. Like yours is absolutely yeah, fine. fine. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it one more time. If it, if it falls, I'm just gonna grab the mic and and, and do it with my. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just like a. <laughs> <coughs> Come on. Well, that's take two. Take two. Third that's time take is a charm. <laughs> Third time is a charm. Oh. Right. Okay. This bitch now is fucking. Super as it can tight, be. tight as it can be. Breaking the table kind of tight. Breaking the table kind yeah. Fuck yeah, okay, good. All right. All right, All right sir. <coughs> okay, let's do it one more time. Third is a charm, as oh. you said. Boom, boom. Jack began acting at the age of 17. His film and television credits include playing the guest lead character Kevin Garvey in the BBC series Silent Witness and the lead in Sean Buckley's Polar Bear for Film 4 Inflammable Films. 
On stage, Jack has taken part in numerous national theatre connections plays and various showcases. He also has a love for performance poetry from which he has gone on to write and perform his own material. Born and raised in Pimlico, Southwest London, he is an exceptionally keen boxer with 27 competitive bouts to date. Without any formal training, Jack's big break came when he took on the lead role of child psychopath murderer Sam in Channel 4's Born to Kill, and just recently as Bonnie Gold on the acclaimed Peaky Blinders series from the BBC. British folk hailed him as the fittest boy of 2017. Welcome to the show, my friend. <laughs> oh, hello, sir. Thank you for having me. That's a good one, actually. I remember uh, when you got the news uh, oh, yes. of the British Vogue, uh, when the British Vogue basically voted you the fittest boy of 2017. <laughs> I was absolutely... We, we were in Portugal, well, weren't we? We were having... It, sushi. Sushi. Yeah. <laughs> it was. I remember you were more buzzing about it than I was. I was, like, I was yeah. like, man, I was like, whoa, Jack, that's fucking phenomenal. That's amazing. That's <laughs> fucking amazing. Seriously. I was like super, super, super excited about that. I think that. we were a little bit... We were a little bit tipsy at the time as well. A so we, bit, yeah. I was like, wow. It's well, the end. I couldn't believe it, really. <laughs> it was the end of the of the trip, wasn't it? The, trip, the yeah, last yeah. day we were about to to go to the airport. Yeah, and then you had the uh, dent in your car. <laughs> oh man, what a story! Do you know what happened in the end? I never. I actually had to pay. Yeah, the, you told me. Yeah, because oh, I didn't man. have insurance, and yeah, that was that was. It was a real. It must have been a, an annoying sort of end. Because I don't remember. I mean, I generally, I, and, and generally, when you look, remember we were looking at the door. I mean, it was basically just impossible for. I mean, if I had, if I had, you know, done yeah. that to the door, <laughs> yeah. I would, I would have remembered. But and it by the the way the door was banned, it was clearly that someone just uh, uh, yeah. uh, probably hit me. Somewhere. Clearly, your uh, your explanation didn't work to the. Uh, who well, yeah, I didn't. Pay, I didn't pay, well, the thing is, I didn't pay for the. Um, I didn't pay for the um, for the insurance, so there wasn't much oh, that so I could right. actually. So that right. I could, because know, I guess we pay. we didn't expect anything to happen in however many days it was with that car. But it was just like three learned, days, I guess. Yeah. Live and learn. Yeah, I I definitely <coughs> learned because I never ever did uh, uh, insurance for any car rentals uh, uh, throughout the years, and I've rented several cars in several different trips, everywhere in the world. And I never paid for for that extra bit, you know. Yeah, but it's but worth it though. It is worth it. It is worth it because if something small like that happens, it's down like, I think it was like five hundred, six hundred euros, oh, which man. is a oh, lot of isn't... money. You know, it's more expensive than the <laughs> whole holiday. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> more than we're spending on the whole holiday. Um, so yeah, we were <laughs> we were just cracking a laugh about uh, the bandy spoon. Oh yes, the bandy spoon. Bandy. Bendy spoon. That is something super the bendy super cool. Bendy spoon is the answer to everyone's problems. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly, it certainly is is for me when I do self tapes. <laughs> Should we explain it? Please do. Please do. So yeah, uh, Carl was looking to film this podcast, and he he was what he was figuring out a way to get his phone sort of high enough to film it. So, but then you know. It, he just couldn't figure out a way, so I was like, oh, just whip out the bendy spoon. So basically, if you bend a spoon, put blue tack on it, and you stick your phone onto that, you can just, you know, stack some chairs on each other, put a chair on a table, something like that, and then, yeah, you've got yourself a stand. You've got yourself you've got a, a tripod. A tripod. If you will, do you know yeah. what I mean? A makeshift one. We'll take a photo <laughs> afterwards of that with yes. your phone, because mine has been used over there. <laughs> and uh, definitely that will go, uh, I'll post a picture for you listeners on, on the Instagram account later on down the road but but yeah uh well so many stories and and quite a few uh things uh to go through actually because uh i actually want to ask you some uh some stuff like just you know stuff that it's really funny you know we were talking about it the other day we've known each other for a little while now and uh we've been on a holiday together and etc but uh it's funny when when you're like on a holiday and uh, a bit, I think that's basically, uh, people don't really get to know each other sometimes. Like, I mean, uh, where were you born? How was, you know, uh, 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 your childhood and your teenager uh, uh, years, you know, what, what were you doing? If you have any siblings, anything. If you have any siblings, exactly. <coughs> and, and it's really funny because that uh, extends to a, a whole range of, of people that we know. That we, yeah. we know for years, uh, work colleagues and friends and, and, and just people in general, you know, we know people like very superficially. 
Um, so yeah, I just wanted to basically start asking you how um, how was how was your basically your childhood? I mean, you, you were <laughs> born and raised in Pimlico, and and, and yeah. how how was uh, life uh, in in Southwest London with your parents? Do you have any any siblings? Yeah. So yeah, no, um, yeah, I have a I have an older sister, um, but she's like eight years older than me. So you've been hiding her then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, no life. Life in um, when I was growing up was great. I mean, you know, you know there was, you know, it was a real honest time. You know, I, and my mother, you know, although she always was, you know, always if I always had a curfew. You know, she did give me that freedom as a kid. So I was out playing with my friends and stuff, playing football. You know, doing what a kid should do. You know, um, you know, it makes me sad when I see kids nowadays with kind of iPhones and iPads, it's like, I, you know, I still don't know how to use one. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, no, and uh, the, the best thing about sort of living in Pimlico as a, as a kid was I was five minutes from everything. I was five minutes from my school. I went to Pimlico Academy School, so I could get up, you know, the odd day if I was a little bit tired. I could get up 15 minutes before eight and I'd be out the door by eight and I'd wow, be in school. Close. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I always left myself enough time, though. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, five minutes from a boxing club. Um, you hate lateness, don't you? I do, mm -hmm. I do, I do. I, do you know why? I just, the feeling... Is that something that came from your family? Something that your parents uh, taught you, like, Jack, be always on time, or, or like, uh, oh. if there was anything uh, that came from, from your family, maybe? I just think with everything, time, you know, you know, even nowadays with auditions and stuff, I, d I don't know if it came from any anywhere. I just think it's come from over time. I've definitely have a preference being early you know to things you know if I had a boxing fight my club always got there early so then we have enough time to chill we have enough time to let the mind rest and the body sort of warm itself up do you know what I mean and and, and get ready for the task ahead and auditions the same I like to sit outside the room and and feel ready I don't I hate being rushed and I think lateness uh, bonds itself with with being rushed do you know what I mean like yeah. if I was to even school, even school, you know, even, you know, I know I just said it, but getting up at, you know, quarter to eight, you know, they were always the days where I was like, shit, <laughs> you know what I mean, like, I don't know, yeah, I just, it's just lateness, yeah, it's just, the, it's just, that's the, it's just a little thing I, I always, I don't like, I hate being late. Just yeah, no, I, I agree, I think, uh, uh, it, it, that, there's that saying that, you know, um, British people tend to be on time, but, but I, I don't, Particularly uh, uh, believe on that, especially like you know uh, things like, for example, the tube. If you go to the tube, you know, you're on the platform waiting for a train, and it says three minutes, two minutes, five minutes. Check your watch. Do do you check your watch. I mean, more often than you would think, uh, it's not only three minutes. It's not only four minutes. It's not exactly what it's saying. You know, it's it, it is very very. Um, I think uh, dishonest in a way. Sometimes I think sometimes the things happen. And and obviously in a big big city like London, you, you kind of have to allow people to be like five ten minutes late, you know, because you never know how how, how your transport uh, will play out. Um, I just think even for like even let's say like if you're meeting your friends or something, mm -hmm. if if one of them's late and you're there, sort of, I always tend to get there maybe five minutes early or two minutes early and whatnot. But I think you know that if you're late when you meet and even meeting your friends, you know they're sort of standing there waiting, and it, I don't know, it just. I think if everybody was on time, it just. It, I we would live in the better world. Yeah, it, I think it does. It does. I, I honestly relax when I know I'm going to be early. Do you know what I mean? I, I tend to relax a lot more, and then vice versa, when I'm sort of running late or sort of cutting it fine, mm -hmm. I definitely feel a lot more stressed. Do Were you, know you ever like late for a big audition? Never. Bad. Never. Or never, honestly, and, and also if I if I even if I know the place, you know, obviously now I've had more auditions as time's gone on. I sort of know the places. Do you know what I mean? I, know, I tend to have auditions at the same places a lot of the time. Um, so, but even if I know I know where it is, I still give myself 15, 10 minutes, twenty minutes spare. You know, and just mm -hmm. sort of walk around the area. And then again, on the other hand, if I'm going to a place I've never been before, if City Mapper says forty minutes. I'm probably gonna leave about an hour. Do you know what I mean? You got it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think just just because you never know what can happen, and like I said, it just lends back to what I just said. It I just feel a lot more. I feel better. I feel at my best when I'm not rushed. 
Um, and yeah, funny enough, if we talk about school for a, for a second, I mean, my school had like a, you know, at the time we all took the mick out of this quote, but they said, um, <laughs> they said, on time is late. Um, yeah, they said on time is late. Um, and lateness is unacceptable. We were like, oh, on time is late. We always, but then I was like, actually, if you think about it, if you get there, sort of, if we're meant to begin this podcast at 6.30 and I roll up at 6.30, I'm late. You are, yeah. You think about it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, even if it, you know, 25 past, we have time to set up, we're here sitting down by 6.30, so. So uh, you were saying that um, you kind of had uh, a curfew uh, at home, uh, your mum yes. basically, uh, but that was uh, from what age to what age more um, Probably around like maybe 11, 12. I had the curfew of like, you know, because I didn't, I didn't actually have a phone. Do you know what I mean? I didn't have a phone. Yeah. So, and, and I think that that was, that, you know, my mum trusted me and stuff. Like she trusted me to get, to get home at a certain time. And I think the more I turned, the more I came home on time, the more I was allowed an extra hour out mm-hmm. or an extra two hours. And, you know, nowadays, obviously I'm, I'm 20 now, I'm about to be 21 soon. Like, but she still worries about me. She still like, you know, texts me. Which and stuff. is great. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah I mean, it shows that they, they they do care a lot about you. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, My parents used to be. Um, they used they used to say something like. Um, Lots of my friends' parents, they used to be up all night, you know, waiting for them to 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 get back home from from when when going out, basically. And I my mom always thought, I mean, you know, uh, the only thing we can actually do is actually pray because if, if something uh, uh, happens, I mean, it, it won't change me being awake at night or or asleep. You know, it's not going to change <laughs> anything if, if 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 something happens. You know. Uh, so she always actually slept really well, but she always asked me to go uh, and, and knock on my parents' bedroom, my, my parents' uh, bedroom door, and just give them, just wave to them and say, "Hey, um, yeah. I'm home, I'm home, and I'm safe." Um, that's amazing. So, yeah, and and how how old is your sister? How 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 old is she? Uh, she's twenty eight. Twenty eight. Oh, she's eight. Well, yeah. Yeah. Eight, same eight, same eight, difference eight, that I am yeah. my sister. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really cool. And it, it, what, what does she do, if you don't mind me asking? Um, yeah, so she's done a number of a number of things over the years. So um, I believe at the moment she works at, on the Strand. Like she's a receptionist for like a workspace. But in the past, she's she's gone through loads of things, you know, and and sort of, you know, perhaps, it, you know, for example, she's not an actress. She doesn't necessarily want to be an actress, but certainly within the world of like having a job she's done loads of things you know what I mean mm-hmm. like she did beauty therapy um, she worked for a car company I don't know like what the car company is but I think she was like the receptionist there so yeah she's done she's done a number of things you know but she you know I, I always I always have long great memories of my sister you know what I mean because you guys I have was, a good relationship yeah yeah great because really, when I was like when I was 10 11 she was 18 and whatever you know what I mean so she, I remember fond memories of going into her room when she had all her friends around. You know what I mean? They're all like drinking vodka. And stuff. How else you gonna do that at the time? But I'm in there trying to impress them all. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, cause I, I might even fancy I'm a ten year old. Do you know what I mean? Let me yeah, 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 fancy yeah. one of my sister's friends. You know, and I'm like trying to make jokes and stuff. <laughs> um, and yeah, you know. How does that work nowadays? How does that work nowadays? Like, you know, you being more exposed in the way that you are, mm. you know, attracting uh, 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 more people's attention, and then obviously uh, your sister's friends probably coming around the house and saying, whoa, Jack, that's super cool. Yeah. Well, my, my sister don't really live with me anymore. Ah, oh, okay. Um, she she's lives not... with her partner, but, but right. she's very sort of uh, homey, so she always comes home, do you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and a room's still there for her. Um, Christmas yeah. time, you guys oh, spend yeah. Christmas together. Yeah, 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 definitely. She, honestly, she, she comes around every week. <laughs> That's good. She, she probably spends you know a night at least a week. Do you know what I mean? But then I guess I'm not always there. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but yeah, as a, she's always I've I've seen her. I see her every week. Do you know what I mean? But she doesn't I guess necessarily live there. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, that's cool. And um, how did you how did you get like first involved uh, uh, with boxing? What uh, at what age did that happen? I mean, were you like a very active kind of kid in school, like playing sports and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I sort of, you know, back then it, it was only only sport really, um, and yeah, I mean, boxing it came sort of. There's no real sort of like backstory. Like I don't have a, a dad who, but I mean, my granddad boxed, but it's not like a boxing family or anything. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but I went to a karate class um, in St. Andrews, it's a place called St. Andrews near where I live. And, uh, you know, I enjoyed karate. I, all my friends went there when we were in primary school. So I enjoyed sort of going there and, and working on something. And I made Purple Belt. Um, but then I remember one Wednesday, I just, I just literally like that, fell out of love with it. I think it lended itself to, although I love the competing side and I love the physical, you know, the physical activity of, of combat and one-on-one -on -one combat, I didn't like the way karate was right way, wrong way. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It was like, oh, your hands are too low. Or when you're doing the cat or it's like, oh, that was the wrong move. Um, so I kind of was like, I don't really want to do karate anymore, but I do want to do this this one on one combat combat type thing. So literally two weeks later, um, searched up boxing clubs around me around my area, found the Fitzroy Lodge Amateur Boxing Club, um, and I went in there and I've never looked back really. Um, and, it, and the doors always open for me. It's a place to go to escape, a place to go to to completely, you know, completely be honest with yourself. You know, you know, can't get more honest than two two people trying to outwit each other, outsmart each other in a boxing ring with rules you know and, and what age were you when you when so you I went there when I was 11 I had my first fight when I was 12 so it was there I remember the date I'll never forget it 12th of December 2009 my first fight I was 39 kilos so you were 39, 39 kilos I mean you, you're a fitness guy so you know wow. you know how small I'd be my gloves were, gloves were bigger and than you were what 5'8 five, 5'9 five, oh no no probably maybe I don't know I'm about 5'10 now 5'10 so now yeah well obviously back in the day yeah, back yeah. in the day um Maybe five four. I was, I was skinny. Do you know what I mean? I was skinny, but but you know small. Mm -hmm. But I remember I, I've got the video still. You know the DVD of, of my first fight. Oh really? Do my, you? my head isn't as big yeah. as my head isn't as big as the corner. You know, so me and the guy I'm fighting, our heads are shorter than the actual corner. So when we're up against the ropes, we you know we could have fallen out of them. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we, um, nah. But yeah, no. And, and on, 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 on the running up to that, uh, were you? Uh, how many times a week were you training at the time? Oh, I trained uh, uh, up and even so from maybe twelve or maybe yeah, twelve because that's when I took it more seriously. So from about twelve to seventeen, um, the least I'd ever do a week is twice a week. But that's like bottom. Like well, that's, so that's for the least. five years basically, yeah, you yeah. maintained uh, uh, twice at a week least at two, least. But then it was at most of the times it was three, three, mm -hmm. three times in a boxing gym, um, and then when I was younger it would be maybe one run a week. But mm -hmm. then certainly when I started getting like fifteen, sixteen, I had trained three times a week at the boxing club and then ran twice in the week. Oh, so you're into running then? Oh, mate, I know you are. I, honestly, running, man. I, I, I mean, I'm one of the few people that. Certainly, when it when it comes to boxing training, actually really enjoyed running, because it is a it is a tough form of training when you don't enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like, it, and it takes motivation to get out in the cold and absolutely and run. I mean, I'm sure you can you can you can. Man, it does. It's that. very it's it's very mental, isn't and it? How you long do you, do you run? So, um, it it depends. Right, currently, right now, I'm I'm on an intense training because I do want to do a. Half marathon in under hour and twenty five minutes, and that's pretty tough. My my, my personal sure best now it's uh, one twenty six fifty. And you want to get it repeat after under one twenty five. Under one twenty five. So cut a minute, minute or so. Yeah, two minutes ideally, mm -hmm. and that's that's pretty. That's a that's a long shot. But then uh, the 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 main goal is actually to to run a marathon uh, a sub three under three hours, and uh, my best so far is three hours and eight minutes. So uh um, that's still pretty good, man. Yeah, I know, I know it is, but but it's man, it's really really tough. So right now I'm following this training right from this guy uh, called Klaus Heckman. He's a Danish coach, and he trained like just the badass runners in Copenhagen. And uh, I'm doing an average of forty fifty miles a week, nonstop, nonstop wow. since since November. Since November, I haven't. I probably since uh, November twenty seventeen, I stayed uh, just once, forty eight hours uh, 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 without wow. you know, with no running. Uh, currently, I just it's just one day a week of rest, and when I say rest, it's like today for example was my rest day. I, I didn't do any running, but I went to the gym. So uh, so I'm really it's like a lifestyle, man. it is it is a lifestyle, and I'm taking it very very seriously because uh, I mean it, it's really good, and you know I have a. Huge uh, uh, community, like you know, the Mikhail Running Club and everything. So, um, 
it is good. It feels good and for your mind, you know, and, and when you see the results as well. And, and running, it's kind of like, I, I believe, somehow uh, boxing as well because when I, I did Muay Thai years ago and um, I remember being like on situations where, you know, you like sparing with someone and man, you get a hit, you get two hits and then psychologically that really yeah. affects you. You know, well, so you kind of have to be strong-minded in order to keep up with it. But you also, you go home and, you know, for example, whenever somebody gave me, you know, for, you know, in the gym, and certainly in my gym, everybody wanted to prove themselves. So when I had about 20 fights, you know what I mean, I'd be sparring somebody who's my own weight who might only have five or six fights. So they know what they're doing, but naturally, the you know, I do have more experience. But they always push themselves. And, you know, I remember the odd time getting getting some good work from people who were less experienced than I was. I remember going home going, man, you need to tighten up. <laughs> but it, you motivate yourself, do you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. motivate yourself to do better. And I think with running, you know, it's what a way to escape. You know, I find when I'm running, I can't actually think about something for longer than a minute. You can't keep your mind on things. And then if you're thinking about something like, oh, you know, perhaps you, you know, let's just say like broke up with your girlfriend or something, you know what I mean? Which it clears I, you know, your mind. It does clear your mind, I feel. Um, and the, you know, like I say, when, once you get fitness into a routine, it becomes less of a chore. Um, and you know, I, I'm obviously not, I'm not as intensely training for boxing as I, as I used to be now. But mate, you know, if tomorrow I got offered a part playing a boxer, you know, believe you me, I'll, I'll be back in the gym tomorrow. And did tomorrow. you, and, and like uh, all of those years of boxing, um, even though you're not uh, currently training now uh, regularly, you're not training at the moment, right? Like um, I go down the odd time. Do you right. Mean? I go down to loosen out if I really need to. But, I mean, boxing's a hard form of training when but, but you I don't mean, necessarily have the motivation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it takes motivation. For but example, you can knock someone down. You, 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 I mean, you did I for know, so the, many the, years. The you know, you know how. Yeah. yeah exactly. I know, I know what. I'll, yeah. I know. You can defend yourself, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, at the same time, is, which is a very good thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, but what you'll find, I guess, well, I'm sure you you got this from Muay Thai. I've never needed to to defend myself. You know, I've never had a fight. I've never had a fight. Obviously, when you're a kid, you know, in primary school, you have a scuffle and stuff. But obviously, honestly, I can as long as I go, I've never had a fight outside of outside of sanctioned boxing fights mm -hmm. or sparring so it's given me a, a clear mind it's given me a it's given me a I don't know how to say, but but something where you're, you you are you are true to yourself yeah you know and and and, and right now I know that uh, we were talking um, uh, a few days ago and, and and last year as well about like uh, recently you you obviously we're gonna get into it you've been involved in, in a lot of things that so many uh, yeah. great things happened for you uh, on on the acting world, on your professional life, uh, but what, uh, what what's keeping you from uh, I don't know, like uh, maintaining a more regular uh, exercise regime, for example, say running a couple of weeks a, a couple of times a week or, or, or boxing a couple of times a week. Is that is there anything in particular uh, holding you back? Uh, you lacking I don't know motivation, or you just don't have the time. You're super busy. What, what's going on with that? I think I think definitely. Not that it holds me back, but I hear you said their motivation. Certainly, if I'm, if I had a part, for example, you know, Born to Kill or Peaky Blinds. When I did Born to Kill, I took up diving and I started swimming. But then the minute Born to Kill was finished, I kind of was like, why would I swim anymore? I know that's kind of like because I only did it for the job, so the motivation was there. And Peaky Blinders, I got back in the boxing club. Um, so I think. Not that there's anything really holding me back, but it's definitely when the, mo when, when the motivation presents itself, when something is there where I go, no, no, I need to, I need to get back in the gym, I'll do it. And I kind of know the way my body works. So it, honestly, like, to if tomorrow, oh, you've got a part as a runner or a, a fencer, mm -hmm. Or, or or a chess player, you know what I mean? I'll be I'll be going to chess but club, then, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but then, but, but Jack, then you're saying basically that, um, you don't have, um, don't want to put words in your mouth, but yeah. you don't have uh, the self-motivation to simply go out for, for a run or simply uh, box anymore. I, I mean, think, yeah, you, you, I do need, you, need, you, you do need something to yeah, yeah. push you, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said, but like, obviously I know that's Because like for me, like the biggest, the biggest motivation, you know? for example, for me is just um, 
it's just pushing my body. It's just mm. uh, uh, getting to understand and 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 feel the way that I feel because you 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 know like after you go for a jog, you know, twenty minutes, half an hour, man, when you finish and you take a shower, it's just like wow, yeah, you yeah. feel your body like kind of like drained, but like in a good way. Mm. You feel good, and you have some good food, and you you know replenish yourself with good nutrients. You I just feel well. amazing. I eat well. That's that that's you know I think with but with training. It's more because I do train. I do have the odd the odd run, but I think I think I think definitely you know auditions coming through and having lines to learn and things to kind of research and whatnot. I think, for example, if I was if I started up running, and I was like right every Wednesday I'm going to start running, I would stick to that as long as I can. But then the minute let's say an audition comes through. And it's for let's say Thursday. I'll spend you prioritize most of that. Wednesday. I'll pri to prioritize that. So I don't think the because I don't think it's necessarily not having the motivation and to to get out and run. I think it's just a lack of ru routine. And I'm, I'm getting there. Do you know what I mean? I think yeah. obviously with the Christmas break recently, I kind of made the decision. I was like, no, I'm just gonna chill for the rest of the year. So now in this new year, um, odd run here, odd boxing training here you know the routine will come and i think oh yeah you, you 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 just oh, you're just mentioning about uh like um learning lines and mm. uh doing your own research and all that um if you're not down to uh to do a job you mm. know say if, if you've got a part i understand that you're gonna sit down and then you're gonna obviously learn the lines and practice and and and, and we're gonna talk more about that later on but uh, for example, for instance, does it? As I'm, I'm asking because I generally don't know, and I'm curious, and I'm sure that uh, a lot of people um, would be interested to, to to know that as well. Because as a runner or as a boxer, even if you don't have a fight, you keep practicing your skills. So whenever something comes up, you don't have to start from scratch. You kind of like, you know, you just have to basically intensify your training or focus on certain. Uh, things of uh, that, that you feel that you're not up to scratch um, as an actor do you have any sort of like uh, daily routines or weekly um, goals that you have to achieve personally okay this week I'm gonna practice uh, Irish accent for example or uh, just randomly uh, or I'm gonna uh, do a bit of research of history of I don't know is there anything like that that you because uh, you, 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 I would like you to, to, to tell us as well that uh, you don't have any formal like uh, 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 training on, on acting. So do, do you do anything like that in terms of like uh, maintaining your, uh, well, in, enhancing perhaps your, your natural talent for it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always, <coughs> always sort of, I'm always thinking about it. You know, every day I always think about parts I'd like to play and characters generally I'd like to be and indulge in and, and you know, so... Yeah, I mean, if I'm every time I look in the mirror, every time I'm sort of watching something, I'll always, you know, maybe do the accent. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm always talking a different accent, so sort of talking doing a that. Different yeah. Accent. Yeah. Talking a different accent now. But what, wow. what accent? I don't, I don't know. know. I know. <laughs> you know, Joe is so good, man. Yeah, yeah. He I mean, is he's similar. He's similar to. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of. It's fun to to do that. Do you know what I mean? That's just to because it's you know. Just it, honestly, if you're just brushing your, you know, not well, not brushing your teeth, but if you're just there and chilling in a bath or something, start talking. Yeah, just start talking like Irish accent. <laughs> okay, that that's a good moment for you to to, to tell me about um, your fears of your fear of having oh. uh, of being in a bath oh, yeah. and uh, having. Oh uh, yeah, I'll explain. <laughs> yeah, please do explain because uh, yeah, it's a bit confusing. I know that you know one of your biggest fears is to, uh, be to be. What, eaten, eaten by, by a shark, shark. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a genuine fear. <laughs> so, if I was to quickly go on a tangent, I remember when we were in Portugal, yeah, yeah. and we were jumping off that boat. Wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a fear of, of it mid air, a shark coming out of the water, and I just fall into his mouth. Honestly, man, seriously, and then, see, <laughs> was that going that through your mind? mind I'll still time jump before. off the boat, but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, talking about the bar situation, I mean, I do, ah. Uh, yeah, I have an irrational fear of sitting in the bath and a shark coming up from the bottom and just taking me away. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. But that's why it's an irrational fear. I know you will never mind. know. <laughs> it's in Jack's mind. <laughs> yes, in my, and also, you know, if I've, I've had many times where, let's say you're swimming in a pool 
but it's quite dark, do you know what I mean? And you can't necessarily see, you, you're swimming, but you can't see under the water, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I have an irrational fear of a, of a shark being in there. <laughs> That's just me. Oh, Honestly, man, I think it's it's animals with S's I'm scared of, man. Snakes, animals sharks, with S's. spiders. Ah. You know, I didn't know a snake had an ass. <laughs> no, no, an S. Oh, an right, an S. S. Sorry, an S. yeah, yeah, right, gotcha. Did you say S. an S? <laughs> Beep! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, amazing, wow. So, uh, yeah, practicing, because, uh, yeah, I, I, can, I can only imagine that, like... Well, it's, it's, I'm l- sorry to interrupt, but no, it's I'm lucky in the sense of, you know, as time's gone on in, 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 in the career that, that I have an agent... You know, and I get audition. I have an agent in the U.S. and the U.K., so um, you know, I have I have every week I have auditions come through and for different characters, you know, different for both projects, here in the U.K. Both and in the U.K. America. and the U.S. Yeah, so every week I'm I'm learning because every week I'm taking on a new character or reading a new script or you know doing a new accent, you know, American accent. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It, like. And how, how difficult is that for you? I mean, so oh, now it's getting more, you know, uh, you know, the more auditions you have, I've always found the more sort of in the room auditions I have doing an American accent. Give me an example. How do you practice that? For example, you need to uh, um, learn watching, an accent. Watching films. Watching again. films. Yeah. And then while you're watching and listening, do you basically speak with yourself, talk to yourself? Like, basically, yeah. So you can hear, do you record your voice perhaps so you can uh, hear it afterwards and see if you're getting that? Yeah, I think the recording of the voice, I do that for accents I, I'm not quite, I feel like I'm not that strong at. Do you know I mean? Like a general standard American accent, I sort of know, I know the way I sound, do you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. But let's say it's like, you know, Southern America or something like South African, do you know what I mean? Something that's quite alien to my ear. I don't, I don't necessarily speak to someone with that accent or hear that accent at all. I would tend to video record or you know voice mm-hmm. note my to see what I sound like. Yeah. And, <coughs> but yeah, man, watching a film. If a guy says a certain line, repeat that line. I guess you mm-hmm. know. I guess there's, you know, I have my own kind of. It's, it's almost like knowing the way your body works, it's knowing the way your mind works and knowing the way you work. Do you Absolutely, know what I mean? So yeah. um yeah. What do you um what do you like what do you normally do like uh, uh we know I know we're talking about like exercising and that helps a lot mm-hmm. as well. Uh, but what do you do to like to unwind? Like say you wanna just take a break from, from lines, you don't wanna like uh, um you know, j- uh, saying you really like to try uh, learning for, for, for an audition, you really like putting putting the time down and then you kind of like sometimes getting like... Yeah, totally sometimes your head gets a bit... Gets a bit too... Yeah. yeah. Is there been. anything in particular that you look, you know, oh man, I like uh, going uh, uh, for a stroll in the park with, with, with my cat, mm. with my, my frog. Well, yeah. <laughs> do you actually have one? I do, I do indeed. I, do. <laughs> ah, I, I, used I used to have two. Seriously? One, one passed. Oh. Um, but I have one called Dixon. <laughs> Dixon, D I X O N. X O N. Okay. <laughs> we'll get on to that. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, the things I like to do when I unwind, um, genuinely seeing friends and talking to them, and and just just going, just being with friends. That's probably a main one. But to be honest with you, I actually really enjoy kind of having a cup of tea and watching watching TV or watching something and. To completely unwind like if i've had you know i've had low you know there's been times where i've had a lot of a lot of script to learn throughout the week and perhaps you know you don't always get a lot of time you know you might get a script come through the day before and of course the people who give you that audition they know they know that you know learning 10 pages in an evening is is hard so they always say you know um you don't have you don't have to learn it all but be familiar but i always Without fail, I'll make myself learn it all. That's just the way That's I, amazing. I don't know, but I just, That's it's just amazing. I would never be able to do that. I can only think... Uh, <coughs> well, my record is 17 pages in, in one evening. And God. then the audition is in the morning. Um, and then another one, I remember, funny enough, for Born to Kill, I remember uh, after my first audition, I, I felt it went really well, you know what I mean? You, you, you buzzed, and, and when they gave the recall, I was like, yes, you know what I mean? And, and then I was meeting the director, so I was like, oh, this is the first time I'm meeting the director, so I want to impress. And they gave pretty much 
a number of scenes, let's say seven or eight or whatever, and then they were like, oh, you know, be familiar with them, you know, learn them what to be. You don't have to learn it all. But then I was like, right, I've got six days, like five or six days. So I was like, do you know what? And they sent episode one and two. So what I did is I learned every single scene that the character Sam was in, in episode one and two. Learned them all. Wow. And I put down the scene numbers on a, on two post-it notes. I had episode one, post-it note for episode one, post-it note for episode two. And I put every scene number and what character it was with. So Jenny, the mum, or, or Chrissy, the girlfriend, or even if it's just teacher, you know what I mean? So when I went into that room, I went in without my bag, nothing, just went in with a t-shirt. So then they were like, right, we're gonna do the scene with, uh, with Jenny. Uh, episode one, I just go, oh, the one where, which one, you know, blah, blah, blah. They go, oh, let's do the one when you come home from school in trouble. Bang. Bang, you in them all. Yeah. yeah. And, and that you learn in how many days? Oh, yeah, actually, I had a lot of days there, mm. do you know what I mean? But that was 42 pages. And that, what, and that basically it's you um, in your bedroom at in my home. Bedroom. And uh, maybe, maybe. How many hours do you say you would put, like, uh, how, how would be, uh, say, your routine? Okay, Wednesday morning. Um, you got up, well actually, I was going to ask you later on, but let's just um, use the opportunity to, to get into that. Do you have any um, morning routines, <coughs> like like something that you do every day, you get up and then, is there anything, is there anything in particular that you do in the morning that you, you know, say a day that you always do? I yeah. always have fruit in the morning. I mean, I always sort of like having fruit in the morning, that's my breakfast. Um, I always like to get up, you know, reasonably early. Do you know what I mean? Which not, would not be? So maybe, maybe nine, mm -hmm. maybe nine, eight, nine, um, ten. Do you know what I mean? Not, not really. <laughs> reasonably than 10. early. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> reasonably <laughs> early. And I know, you know, um, but you know, yeah. Uh, but like, don't really have any morning routines, if you will. You know, for example, I don't have a. So you just have like fruit for breakfast, say, uh, just uh, a piece of fruit and a cup of tea or coffee? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, uh, that's only sort of the uh, routine, if you will, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but every day is kind of different, you know, so... I, but it, on the line of sort of technique to, you know, learn lines, if you will, I mean, it would be different, let's say, if I got up on a Wednesday morning and I had auditions on Thursday, Friday, that my days would mostly be working on that. Mm -hmm. So, but the routine would always be, I spend time learning it, then I take time away from it. So I tend to put all the pages out in front of me and when I learn a page, I turn it over. And then eventually all of them are turned over and I just go through it. But then once I, f and then obviously put the pages away and I do it in my head and do it in my head over and over again. That's when you that know out. that you learn the content of but those well, pages. That's, yeah, yeah, but that's when I learn it, but then, what I do is I then take maybe two hours away from it. Mm -hmm. So don't think about it, don't even look at it, and then come back to it. Mm -hmm. And then what I find is there's an odd page I don't quite know it that well. Mm -hmm. I go, I, le I learned it on, this, on that second because cause I was doing it and it was very much fresh in my brain. But that, that's, that's, that's my technique, you know, I tend to do it, spend some time. And that would be how many time. hours on the day, say? Um, depending on how, how much pages it is or how much like maybe it's a different accent mm -hmm. um, the more pages the longer do you know what I mean and, and the less pages so you know for example I had an audition the other day which had two scenes which did not seem like that much but there was five pages in each scene and it was quite you know meaty dialogue so I would say I spent I mean a lot a lot of hours on it to be honest that like that's where I don't need motivation because mm -hmm. it's what I want to do for the rest of my life you know um, and I actually quite enjoy reading a new script and trying that, out a new thing. That's amazing what you just said, um, <coughs> because this acting basically was never a dream for you. It was never something, uh, 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 from, from what I understand, that you, that you like grew up like surrounded by actors and actresses mm -hmm. and, 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 and dreaming about one day becoming an actor yourself. Uh, so uh, how, how did the acting, uh, how did this world uh, enter your life? Do you, what's the earliest memory uh, that I would come to mind now uh, that, okay, great, um, I'm gonna get into this even though it's not uh, a, a dream mm -hmm. at this point. Well, earliest memory was year six. I jumped in and I did uh, the Artful Dodger in Oliver Twist, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, 
um, that was my first time I ever really performed and ever sang or whatever in front of an audience and acted in front of them. Um, but then as time went on, like I always, I always enjoyed drama, but from honestly, from 11 years old, the day I walked in a boxing club, I thought that's what life was gonna be. You know, I was boxing, 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 and I happened to enjoy drama on the side. And whenever I went to drama class, I was really excited. So if it was, if there was ever, if there was ever a, a, lead, a leaderboard of like what I love, it would be boxing acting acting was never going to be the, the thing. It was always boxing, that's it. Just happened to enjoy this as well. And then, funny enough, when I was, uh, when I was 15, um, 15, 16, I got an injury to my back, which happened just on the bag. I was just punching. I must have moved the wrong way. And I felt this like little like thing in my back where I was like, oh, that's hurting. And I sort of took, like went, went home that day. And every time I went training, I kept hurting it whenever I would do a certain thing. If I would duck really quickly or you know, you know, move out of the way or do something really sharp, but then I never let it rest. You know what I mean? And for about two months, I was I kept going training. I was like, oh, it was all right today. Then I would do one thing, and I'd go, ah, it hurts. Until eventually, I was like, this is never going to get better unless I, you know, unless I, you know, take some rest. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, then went to the doctor and stuff, found it was just you know, basically a torn like muscle there, and, and I never let it rest. So I was out for sixteen months. Oh God. And I was out for 16 months, sort of, and really sort of, like I said, for three times a week training. I mm -hmm. couldn't do that anymore. So it's like, shit, I need to find a way to fill my time. You know, now talking to you right now, it's an amazing thing because I now look back at that 16 months and it was in them 16 months that I developed a love and a passion for acting because I never, I didn't have any, I didn't have boxing anymore because I had the acting. So I was like, no, I'm going to really... This is what I'm going to do my time in. This is what I'm going to practice, and and then literally got back to boxing after the 16 month injury. I had 10 fights in the period of time when I was like, I don't actually think I want to box anymore. But I had 10 fights. That's like enough fights to, <laughs> to like in that time to go. Like, am I enjoying this anymore? Am I really loving this like I used to? Um, and then yeah, after my 26th fight on the same day as I had my no sorry my 25th fight. On the same day, uh, I got told I got my first real job, professional job, which was Silent Witness, and I was buzzing, and I won that fight, and I, I just I had, had two more after that, and I was like, do you know what? I'm like, I don't really want to do this anymore, and, I, and literally just like that, you know? But now I know, I mean, if you were, to, if you were speaking to 15-year-old Jack, 14-year-old Jack, I would go, no, no, nothing will ever beat boxing. I'm going to be a boxer and grow up. Honestly, now, I'm... Did, I want to do acting for the rest of my life, you know? That's like, amazing. And hopefully n nothing ever comes and takes that away, like, and I just all of a sudden want to be a, an architect. An architect. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think that will happen, yeah, Jack. It won't happen. It won't happen. <laughs> but but how, did, how, how did you get that job? Did you, I mean, did you have an agent at the time? Correct. Yeah, I worked. Same so agent that you currently oh, no, have? No, not my current agent. So I went to, see how you said earlier that I had no formal acting training. Um, I, I didn't go to any like drama, official drama school and I didn't learn by any anything, but I did go to a drama like place, uh, like a drama class on, on Saturdays in Camden. It was a very unorthodox form of, of training. It was very much a, a place to go and you've pretty much learned more about yourself as opposed to characters or as opposed to acting you actually quite learn a lot about yourself I'm sorry, this is a place that you yeah there's a drama so you know close to here it's called YPTC okay a drama class on Saturday so although it wasn't formal acting training I did have a place to go to 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 I mean to practice and you know for use of a better term to train I know it's a night um, but yeah no and they had a, a little agency attached to them and naturally because I went to the drama um, class I naturally went onto it. Do you know what I mean? They mm -hmm. they had a photo of me and and, they, and, they, and I went onto it and you know had a few auditions here and there. Never got anything, but then this thing came through for a silent witness, and it was just it was just perfect. It was a perfect. Do you think there was a bit of luck involved in that as well? Oh, a bit no, of I destiny mean, or I mean, luck? I mean, it was. I mean, luck. Definitely, the fact they came across my photo and the fact I had an opportunity. I was lucky to have an opportunity. Um, but you know, I started off, I did a self tape and I'll never forget the self tape. I, I got home and I, I woke up my mom and sister I was like, right, Holly, you, 
you read the lines, and I'll be filming. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's and I was, cool. I, was, I was doing this tape and then sent it off and the production and stuff liked it. And then I went into the BBC building twice after that to have an audition. Um, White City? Um, um, on Vale. No, no, no. Um, oh, um, it's on the... It, it's on. The, it's not White City. But it's on the. It's on the Central Line, mm. Acton. Could be. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I, can't, I could remember if I. If I. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um. Really thought about it, but not that, that important. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, like, I will forever hold a place in my heart for, for that whole job and that whole, production and the That's fact what that sparkled. someone gave me a shot. You know, mm-hmm. someone gave. It was two episodes. Um, it was just a, it was just honestly a perfect character. It came very close to home. It was a very close to home character for me, and it, the fact that I was able to have my first job playing a character which lends itself very closely to who you know, I felt very easy to get into the mind of that character, and and it was quite a deep story, you know, and it got received well, and that was essentially the beginning of of this. That was the that was the seed, you know, that was mm. that was planted, and now. You know, we're growing. You know, do you um do you yourself uh, <coughs> have any beliefs? Like, do you uh do you cut? I mean, is your family any religious? Do you got do you do you does your family uh, uh uh is your family any religious? Uh, number one question, and number two, do you yourself uh believe in uh, higher energy in God or perhaps even destiny? Because for example, the, the the story how you um. Uh, got into acting it's it's pretty amazing because you did something that you really really enjoyed it and you're doing it well as far as I am I'm concerned uh, I'm talking about boxing now <laughs> yeah because uh, that, that's when you got you got the injury and then yeah, yeah. that's when you basically started uh, 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 you got into the the acting isn't mm-hmm. it so it was from 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 uh, not a good situation from an injury you had that you had to stop and then on that period you end up uh, um, getting into into acting, so that's kind of like um, I I I see those things as a bit of like oh, wow you, you never know if you haven't had that injury perhaps you could have carried yeah, on yeah. as a boxer yeah, yeah. and do you know what I mean I so um, so yeah does your family have any well, uh, are they religious do you yourself have any uh, particular beliefs well I, s- I definitely don't ever put a label on it. You know what I mean? I, 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 but I certainly wouldn't say I'm atheist or anything. I certainly wouldn't say I. I do like basically what you just said. I do believe very much in things happening for a reason, and that I do feel like there is somebody, whoever it is, you know, up there, certainly guiding me and and is there for me on my shoulder and part of my journey. You know, um, but yeah, I, I I wouldn't put a label on it really. If, you know that that's the only way I can really answer the question. Do you have any? Do you do any any sort of mantra before say you go into into an, into an audition? Is there anything that you say to yourself? Uh, well, my, I do actually. Funny enough, um, you know it's quite a sort of personal thing. Pretty much every time I you know I always leave like time again you know being early. I always like to go to the toilet. I always like to have a wee before. I don't know. I'd, I always and I always turn my phone off. There's just always these little things I do, and you know, there's been the odd time. And <laughs> I know it sounds like, but I'll, I'll say it anyway. But you know, when I'm washing my hands, I look in the mirror and I go, "Let's do this, champ. We got this, champ." Like, do you know what I mean? You of say, course, yeah. "Let's do this, champ." Do you know yeah. what I mean? Especially when it gets deep into the process. And I've been deep into the process of of for films and for stuff where I haven't got the part. Do you know what I mean? It's it. But I, you know, when you're down to the fourth audition you know the people you know the room you know the character you know it's just it's not down to your ability that you won't get it it's down to very loads of variables make where you look maybe maybe the high anything um so yeah definitely you know the more i get into a process of auditioning i i like going to the toilet i know how the i know the setup and i look in the mirror i go we've got this champ there's been an odd time funny enough where there's been a guy coming out the toilet or in the toilet. I'm like, come on, chap. Like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, yeah. that, that, that's it, man. The, the, the positive energy. Absolutely believe yeah. in yourself and, and tell yourself. I, th- I think that's a, it, it's very powerful. I truly believe it's super powerful when you actually do that. I think it's amazing. I think it's an amazing mantra. I, I, I personally do that to myself, you know, uh, sometimes for whatever reason. If you're feeling down or if you're feeling doubtful that you can achieve something, 
you know, just look to yourself and, and repeat something very positive, like you just said, you know, like, mm. for example, let's That's do this, champ. Yeah, let's yeah. go, champ. Because repeating those things w in your mind, you basically create this aura, this energy within yourself that, you know, uh, I do believe that we are surrounded by energy and we end up attracting things because of that, you know. Uh, there are studies out there basically saying that uh, every thought you have, you emanate a frequency to the world, you know. So there are all, all of those things uh, uh, playing uh, uh, a part. And when you actually live your life and you, you put those things into, uh, into your daily uh, uh, routine or your daily uh, uh, professional uh, uh, routine, man, I genuinely believe that, you know, things uh, uh, do happen. And, and for you, in instance, if things are just like going... Uh, crazy like 2017 was a big big year for you wasn't it like it was wow it's big big year there's been a you know something that everything that's came it's been such a you know cherish every moment you know what I mean I've definitely definitely cherishing every every moment embracing it all you know embracing the new ex the new experiences you know because funny enough like with born to kill that was the real game changer but See how naturally, when you do a show, when you film something, <coughs> excuse me, um, you it take you know it takes a while to edit it all and, and stuff. But funny enough, when I was doing Born to Kill, I actually finished filming on February first, two thousand seventeen, um, and it was out in April. What was that day? I can't remember actually. Yeah, it was out in April. I mean, it was out very quickly. Mm -hmm. So if I think about it, two thousand seventeen, it was like. I finished filming Born to Kill, then it came out, and then it was it was well received and stuff. It was a very honest British show, and people liked it, it you know. Um, and then it was after that I got Peaky, which about two weeks after I finished Born to Kill, started Peaky. I don't know, maybe maybe about May, uh, you know, if I remember correctly. And then I finished that by, before, pretty much during the summer, and then that was out November. You know, and like in the mean, and then it, it was before November that I landed the US representation and stuff. And it's just been a mad year, it's been an absolute mad year, but one that I've absolutely cherished every moment. And, and, and it know. must have been a crazy experience to just uh, kind of like see your face everywhere. I remember, I remember, yeah, I, I, I remember, I remember at the time when, when, when Born to Kill was out, man. Literally, like every bus stop, <laughs> I apologize in the tube, <laughs> you know, everywhere, you know, your face was, was out nuts. there. It was nuts. It was like, because uh, it was not only, I think, uh, the part itself that you got, which was amazing, and the show itself, like, um, I, I, I loved it. I was like, I, I, did, I didn't know what to expect, really. And no, no, thank you, thank you for watching. And I was yeah. like, wow, you know, first time that I saw you after watching it, I was like, Oh my God, Sam is coming! Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Just keep me away from sharp objects. Like yeah. um, but uh, I think the, the 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 when you think about the marketing, it was such a such but an amazing yeah, thing, you know, that you they got the because you you could have been on the show, you could have had uh, the part, but perhaps uh, uh, Channel Four in this case wouldn't have put uh, uh, the, 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 yeah, the, the time and money in order to promote as well as they did. That was so motivating. Because you got like, yeah. if, the channel, if the channel and producer and whatnot believe in it, then you're, that's, that's really, mo it was really like, you know, all these, all these posters, I was like, they believe in it. So it's like, it was a really nice thing because honestly, Born to Kill is my baby. It was, it was the, it was the, it, the that and the Silent Witness is always going to be in my heart because Silent Witness was the first job. Born to Kill was the first leading role, you know, um, and I cared very much about that. Is show. there any plans or, or any talks about uh, like doing a, a, a sequence Seri of that? Seriously, no, no. It no. was always a one-off. It was always a one-off. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's been, but it's been nice to to have people ask me, "Is there gonna be a series two? Or people make tweet me and stuff. Um, but you know, it's funny because obviously the show ends, you know, how it does, and like. You know, he's in prison, <laughs> so it's like, in series two, just him in prison, just imagine, <laughs> nah, but it was always a one-off, you know, but I was happy it's a one-off, it was a, it was a experience I'll never forget, and the marketing, like you said, um, it was really, 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 I don't know, really 
it was it was humbling and then mo- really nice, really nice to see and have everybody kind of go oh, spot the June Hampstead and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, and Jack, on on those, uh, for example, to get um, to get the chance to 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 uh, attend auditions for for, <laughs> for such for such part, uh, such an important part, and and important show as Born to Kill uh, was. Um, when it comes to the business behind it, like getting uh, 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 to audition for those things, this is this is uh, uh, down to having a good agent as well, yeah, isn't yeah. it? I'm like your happy. agent uh, basically uh, find is well connected and he gets those opportunities, and then you go there and then you deliver uh, 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 what you know. Basically, he believes that you can. So yeah, in a, a, a job. basically in a in a nutshell, you know, in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm very very. Uh, very lucky and very grateful to have the team I have, you know what I mean? Like, um, me and my agent have a great relationship, you know, we are very close as people, but we never let that um, come in the way of our business. You know what I mean? We never let the friendship, if you will, um, ever affect our business. He tells me how it is, do you know what I mean? He's very honest with me, and I'm uh, equally as honest. So, I'm very lucky to have, uh, have is it? Is so the agency is Jonathan Aaron, very very lucky to be um, a part of them, part of their team. You know, they yeah. they take good care of me. You know what I mean. And um, what's uh, now that obviously you you, you <coughs> did want to kill, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, Peaky Blinders uh, in a minute as well. But um, Peaky fucking blinders. Peaky fucking blinders. I mean, yeah. loved it, man. Yeah. Oh, so good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad, man, you, I'm glad like, you started from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. yeah Cause I, I remember, it was like, yeah. I, 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 after watching Born to Kill, I was like, uh, you know, I saw your post and everything, and I was like, Fuck, I wanna, I wanna see Jack, you know, on on oh. Peaky Blinders. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I was talking to Joe and 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 you, and then I was like, Joe said, man, at least go and check series three. Yeah. You know, um, it's a great show anyway. So just go and check series three. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, fair play. I'm gonna do that. So I started watching the first episode of of series uh, of series three, and then ten minutes in, I was like, uh, Mr. Shaw, he was in the kitchen. It was his wedding, right? Yeah. And uh, he was in the kitchen with oh, with, 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 with his brothers and oh, that talk, scene was a group scene. Was a group no, scene. Fighting. no fighting. No fighting. No no coke or white powder, whatever yeah. the word he used. And oh, I, says, oh, I can't remember actually. Yeah. When he got to that yeah. point, I was like. Screw this! I'm gonna watch the whole lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I went and, and and watched it all, and then when I actually finished series four, uh, I was kind of, you know one of those shows that you feel like uh, I I felt like really like you know when you uh, feel this connection with the show somehow, and then when it finishes, you feel a bit like orphan. Like well, you oh. had it all. You had it. You know when you finished series one, you had series two, then series three, yeah, series three. So you kind of watched it all in at once. So it was like so close together you've been watching it all so when season four ends you went oh i don't have it anymore as opposed to somebody else who might have watched it from the beginning exactly they've yeah. been waiting for series four you've had it sort of ready so yeah yeah i can see where i i, I, I think I, that's I, like I with any good show that you enjoy you're sad when it ends you're like i need more but a show that makes you want more it's great right yeah, exactly you know I mean? exactly which leads to the question that uh series five is series it, it five, will happen yeah. right it will happen yeah, it's definitely happening Definitely happening. This is Bonnie Gold coming back. Um, you know, I mean, season four ends very much with uh, body, Bonnie and Amber Amber are still alive. You know, I mean, they're still very much Bonnie won the fight. They got their pay. Um, <laughs> you know, so they're still in that world. So, you know, we'll leave it up to, you know, see what happens. See what happens. Yeah. See what happens. Um, I'd very, mu- I'd very much uh, want to be in series five. <laughs> you know what I mean? It yeah. Was, uh, I loved the show. I loved the people and. It was an amazing experience, you know. Even just talking and getting to know, getting to meet some of my idols, but in a situation where you're their colleague, mm-hmm. you know, and they're talking to you as their colleague, and it's like, wow, these are the people that you know, I'm, I'm fans of theirs, but yet I'm meeting them for the first time. And the, I believe in many ways that was even like uh, bigger than than Born to Kill. Yeah, I mean, essentially, that's what like. Although I had a lot more coverage in. in Born to Kill, Born to Kill was, I was the lead in it, Peaky Blinders I was, you know, a supporting part, they still were on the same part, because as much as Born to Kill was was a show that I led, Peaky Blinders was such an established show and it had an audience, so, and it's a collective piece, you know, bound together by the Shelby brothers, mm-hmm. um, 
it's so well done and, and just to have to have your moment in a show like that which Bonnie did through boxing fights and stuff um, yeah, I do put it on the same level as, as Born to Kill and, it, and, and it's amazing to, to, to uh, watching the show to imagine Britain back then isn't yeah. it like yeah. how crazy well, I wish I could were. rock a suit like that now <laughs> you know I, mean? yeah. I wish we were all wearing like suits I know, know yeah you know? everyone well dressed cool, yeah, that would be cool that would be cool but wow go what to the Camden Head just like <laughs> <laughs> well, you can. I mean, that, well, I, that I would think be. Would make well, I, I, you I, would definitely make an impression. I mean, my character was, you know, he was, uh, he was on the lesser. You know, he, he comes in as a as sort of you know part of a gypsy family. You know, mm. rough and ready, and um, I guess becomes a Peaky Blinder. Um, you know, yeah. What, <laughs> what's the What's the deal with um, collecting world wrestling? Entertainment, oh, yes, action yeah, figures. Yeah. Do you well, still you really have, have that? You really have a, you really have gone. gone I, I did, I did, I dig the few things. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, w is a, is when a did you start collecting, and do you still from do? When I was four, something like that. No, but my mom always, honestly, no word of a lie. Obviously, you know, give or take a few things, but every Christmas, every birthday, all I can remember and all I ever wanted was wrestlers. Wow, I loved it. I loved it. I absolutely love it. They used, used to do like nowadays there's pay per views like Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. That that used to be on Channel Four. Mm. Wrestling like you know I used to have VCR tapes. We used to tape it. Do you know what I mean? And I loved wrestling more than anything. Do you know what I mean? I used mm. to play with them wrestlers and you know, I mean this is gonna sound but mad, but if we t talk about destiny, if you will, you know earlier on about anything, you know, guiding you. I used to play all day, all day, every day, doing different voices for different wrestlers and Funny doing how it voices is. out loud. Or never really watched telly, and if it was, it was wrestling. So yeah, over the years, it's it's just built and built and built my collection of wrestlers, and I've probably got five, six hundred. What? It's, it's ridiculous how much I have. It's wow. honestly a lot, and I'll tell you a little. That's word. an entire bedroom oh, filled mate. with those. Honestly, I've a whole figures. box, a whole, a whole, like. Big ass box, do you know what I mean? Filled with them all. Do you have about pack five them all or do you keep some of them in their original boxes? Oh, no, 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 no. All out. They've all got all like out. one arm. <laughs> 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 They've all got like something's loose on all of them. <laughs> so, like some of them have got, funny enough, I had I had the same. Um, so I have a few of them, like I have like five Rey Mysterios, but only one of them is like in good shape. <laughs> like, <laughs> like one of them has like a head that's about to come off. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it's it, and obviously I don't collect them anymore because you know it was a phase in my childhood. Do you know what I mean? Ah, you don't collect them anymore. I, I mean, if you see it, well, I have do I do have a funny thing to say though about it. Mm. So obviously, my mum, you know, she, uh, <laughs> she, you know, she was she used to love running around, getting all my wrestlers, and I, was, you know, very very. She always Your always. Your mum sounds like a very very she's nice the best, woman, man. The best, she man. sounds like. She's Amazing. the best. She's the best yeah. man. She 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 taught me, taught me a lot of uh, a lot of good things. You know, subconsciously. Your parents are still together. No, no, parents aren't together, but they have a good relationship. Right. You know? That's good. Um, I have a great relationship with my with my old man, and and likewise with my mum, and they they do as well. Do you know what I mean? They just you know aren't perhaps compatible as as partners. You know, um, but they've made it work. You know, and they're both they're both um they both are my heroes. You know, if you, if you will, you know, in their own ways and. You know, funny enough nowadays, just to get on the wrestling point, um, it, it's it's really funny. But every every sort of birthday and Christmas, my mum gets me one wrestler. Ah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Know, but it's funny because obviously now the roster of wrestlers are different. Mm -hmm. Back in I would say back in my day, <laughs> don't mean, I'm only <laughs> young, but like, days. but dear, back in the old sort of like fight uh, wrestlers. Um, nowadays, there's a lot of wrestlers I don't actually know. So like my lot like on Christmas she got me these wrestlers I'm like ah oh, like well one wrestler it was like I can't even remember the name of it do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. Um, but it's funny because I don't actually know who they are but it, I don't know it's a nice little thing it's a nice little um thing we have absolutely you know I, mean? I, and think I quite it's enjoy to see great. who it is you know like it might be a Rey Mysterio might be a Triple H you know like, <laughs> yeah the guys I have battered for years for years do you know what I mean. And it's you know it's a nice little thing. I it really, is. I can't wait to see what wrestler she's got me. Without that's so fail, cool. She always gets me one. That's so. so cool. That's that's really really cool. I mean, it's really sweet. <laughs> it's really sweet. Really really sweet. That's Were you that. never into wrestling? 
I was never into wrestling. Never. I was never like, you know, people watch those um, MMA and and, oh, yeah. and stuff like that. It, it never really caught my attention. I never really... Um, uh, I, I, I liked a martial art um, when, I was, when I was younger. I did Muay Thai for like a year, I think. And... Um, but just like for self-defense kind of thing and when it starts to kind of get a little bit too serious, you know, sparring and then getting like super bleedy. Uh, at the time I was wearing braces, so uh, even though wearing those, um, how do you call it, boxing? Gum shields. Gum shields, you know. Um, but the special ones for people Special, braces. yeah. But, you know, I used to get like super bleedy and then it just, it wasn't just, it, it was not fun anymore for me. Um, even though it's a great, great exercise, I mean, wow, it's a training uh, uh, Muay Thai, it's just, man, it gets you an overall fitness that it's unbelievable, it's amazing. Uh, but yeah, no, never been really into into that, never really got like my, never captured my, my imagination in any way. I've right. uh, been always into football and, and running and in school I did a lot of stuff like basketball and everything with all this... Uh, this statue that I have, yeah. a super tall man that played basketball and volleyball and all of that. Uh, <laughs> never, never really good at any of those, but I was quite a good footballer and, and on athletics, like running, I was always uh, um, uh, quite good at it. Um, so, what about uh, this Pat Frog named Dixon <laughs> and, <laughs> and the French Bulldog <coughs> named Coffee? Do yeah, they yeah. still live with you and, and yeah, your mom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, um, the frog just chills. In there, you know, so yeah, just <laughs> do, you keep it, do you keep it in the cage? Well, or how, no, how do you keep it? So it's uh, it, it the the um, it's not like a like a rubbit frog, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not like a you know, like a normal frog, it's not like a normal okay, frog. that's that's what I'm thinking of. But the classification of its name as an animal as a frog, but do you remember, do you ever watch Matilda? Yeah, yeah, do you remember like the newt? Mm -hmm. So it's similar to that, oh, okay. okay, but it, it can't live out of water. It lives in water and it's quite ch my one's quite chubby and big and it has like it swims almost like a human it moves its legs and hands and like human but it's the color of a new it's got the face of a new like that do you know what I mean mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the, the name of the animal is a frog but obviously when you say a frog people might think yeah the green that's what that's what whatever. that's what I thought at first oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah no probably it, probably a normal frog what is the, a lot what, better looking than the one what I've do you feed it with Oh, blood worms. <laughs> Frozen. <laughs> but he's got yeah. like, obviously they have no teeth. Mm. So it's just like... <laughs> but like, Poor sometimes, honestly, if you put your finger in the tank, he'll, he'll he, because they'll have a go at your finger, but they've got no teeth. <laughs> so they're proper like, think, they might think it's food, do you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> no matter how many years he's known me, he's put in. He's always trying. Like, like, Maybe no, it's just a way of saying, I love I you. Love you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like to do I'll take that. Yeah, definitely. But mate, sometimes, yeah, it's funny. Obviously, when I'm not in it, but sometimes in the bath, I run in the bath and I put him in there and let him swim around. He has a great time. I can imagine. That's when he probably is having like, it's Christmas time for him whenever <laughs> yeah. you do that. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas day, yay! <laughs> <laughs> And 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 dog like the yeah, bulldog, yeah. yeah. Does it does it like do you, do you keep it in the house inside the house and everything? Yeah, just chills. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just chills. It's a very you know he's quite. I mean the French bulldog breed tends to be, I guess you know I'm not I don't want to generalize but certainly my dog is is lazy, so you know sometimes you have to motivate you have to get him out. Do you know what I mean? You have do, to, do you take, take him out for walks and stuff? Yeah, yeah, definitely take him out for a walk and stuff and the odd run. I mean, I the jog, odd run. Obviously not when I'm running, but like. If I'm out with him, I'll jog, so he gets a run. But me jogging is him running. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, but yeah, he's a very cute fella. You know, all black with a little bit of white on his on his chest. You know, he's got a, he's just got a lovely face. You know, I love dogs, man. Same, yeah, same, I same. Wish I I'm allergic to dogs. Funny enough, I do. I'm although I, ha although I have a dog, I'm allergic to it. So I never let him lick me or anything, and I never let him on my bed. What happens if? If, if he licks you? No, just sort of my skin just get gets hash. like, yeah, just get a rash and stuff. And obviously if I'm, if, if, the, if, I, if I'm like stroking him and I'm like, t and I touch my face, I also get a rash, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, but I, it, you know, I just love them. I love them so much that I've kind of made, I just, I, I have certain things. So for example, if I'm patting him for a long time and stuff, I then wash my hands or yeah. I just wouldn't let him lick my face, but my hand's fine, there's hard skin, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I'm just not on my bed, not where I sleep. So there's all these little variables of things that, you know, I can make it work. I can, yeah, I'm allergic, but I'm not making it work. Yeah, of course. Um, what about this uh, weird addiction to labels. stealing labels, man? Do you actually I have a? Say that. Do you actually have one in your pocket at the one, moment? I have one in my. You in really my, do. My coat. Do you want me to get it out? I mean, it's on, we're on Please, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, because this is on video. I would like to see that. Well. When when I when I read that, I thought I thought I genuinely thought that uh, it was. Uh, it was a joke. It was a joke. Oh, I thought it was a joke. A joke. I, I, maybe. Feeling labels, I, I, I could I could take that as okay, fair enough. But then carrying one in your pocket all the time, I was like, oh wow, okay, this is this is this is a label. <laughs> it's a, one of those. There's loads. Of, they're the ones that you know. I have certain ones. That I have certain ones that are my favorite. So I never, Real. I never, Real. I never take them out the house. So these ones, these ones, if I lose it, for example, if I, I just have my headphones in there, so. Sometimes when I'm getting my headphones out of my pocket, this falls. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh shit, it's not in there anymore. But these ones are just, you know, just to, to have. I genuinely don't know where it's come from. It's just a little thing I have, little weird things, I'm sure. Do you recollect when it started? Nah. Well, I do, I do recollect a memory, though, of like I did always sort of feel, you know, if you have a towel and stuff, I always, my mum always clocked me like feeling the label all on my clothes and stuff. So I remember the first memory of like, Labels. <laughs> my mum sewed. She got a flannel and sewed labels all on it. Mm. And I had like a flannel label thing. Okay. You know? Okay. Um, and that was that was great. <laughs> mm. um, and it's just stuck, Chris. I mean, obviously, if I don't have one in my pocket, it doesn't. It's not doesn't the end matter. of the world. It's not the end of the world. But I tend to just. I have like, for example, that must. I might have put that in there a week ago. I didn't like put it in there today, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, if I see it, I will. Oh, Say if you go into an important audition and uh, and then for whatever reason you just feel like okay I'm gonna put touch, yeah. touch and, that, and it's not there. Oh no, I don't it's care. Fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no, it's right. not. A, it's, it's not. not a, it's just a you know I got asked by this this um, thing about sort of ten sort of fun facts. So obviously you you, you do the facts. Oh you know I've had however many been twenty seven boxing fights. You know, um, but then I was like I, I want to do some like peculiar ones, but true. You know what I mean? Like. And that's true, yeah, it's a true one. I just, I like the feeling of it. But it's so not the end of the world if I don't have it. Do you have any weird, uh, that can closely resemble <laughs> how closely weird the label addiction is? Closely resemble addiction. Uh, Karen, uh, I mean, besides you running a ridiculous amount of miles. Yeah. Away. <laughs> well, um, I can't really think or have you of had anything. One? Um... An addiction to sleep to tattoos? Think. Well, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not as much as uh, something that, um, yeah, kind of like my mum hates it. My mum hates it. Yeah, she does. Really? Yeah. The first <laughs> one I did when I did when my you, when, when people say, like, the name, so if I go, Carl, <laughs> seriously, you know it's gonna, you know it's true, and they go, no, seriously, Jack. Like, no, no, yeah, exactly, exactly. The thing is, you know, my, uh, my, when I did my first half sleeve, uh, I did in London, and then flew back to Brazil for my mum's uh, birthday. And even though she was aware that I did the tat, and my family, my dad, my sister, everybody, everyone, they were all aware, but they, they haven't seen it till the point, till the moment when I yeah, yeah. went there. So uh, <laughs> my mom kind of like obviously you know picked me up at the airport and having a chat and having a good time, but I was hiding it at the time. And she didn't come like oh have, let me have a look. She she was had no interest uh, at all whatsoever in seeing the bloody tap. Uh, comes the uh, the party in the evening and I'm obviously having a few drinks. Had a few drinks at that point. Uh, I was just like my my dad was like please don't. don't show her tonight you know leave it for another moment and i've had a few drinks I'm like hey mom come here let me just show you seriously she left the party it was like on on on, on oh, downstairs of, a, of their wow. apartment so she just went back to the apartment she didn't come back and everyone was like where, where, where is she and i was like well she got scared of my tail and people were like what and then obviously after they that they got a and full sleeve <laughs> then now i have a full sleeve but, but the thing is you know uh, it's always that first one uh, at least for my mum was just like that. If I obviously every time that I say I'm gonna do my neck, my 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 right arm, they're like, oh no no yeah. don't do that. But you know now it's it's just that. But just what, what, what do you honestly think your mum would say 
if you came back and you had any form of a face tattoo or a neck tattoo. So oh no, but well, that's extreme. That was extreme. Yeah, yeah. No, what no. do you think she would do? Like if you like, well, she used to sign you. <laughs> no, she, no, she wouldn't. No, I, I don't think it would go to that extreme. Yeah. But um, God. I don't know. It's just disappointment. It would be a big disappointment. But then... So a running shoe under your eye or something. Oh my <laughs> goodness, that sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds so, so awful. No, I would, I would never do that. I, 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 I think that there are limits, you know, when it comes to... Uh, personally, there are limits for myself. I don't judge anybody else. If you want to have a tap on your neck or on yeah, your face, yeah. that's, that's up to you. And, you know, but, 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 but on my skin, uh, I, I just wouldn't do well, it. I just have preference, yeah. Pre yeah. Personal preference, exactly. I, I don't judge. I mean, if you want to have it, it's fine. But uh, personally... Some people look quite, you know, like, you would think a face tattoo would completely ruin something. But mm -hmm. then I actually think, you know, some people I've seen with face tattoos, they go, ah, she looks all right. It looks good. Yeah, you know I mean? Like, absolutely. it kind of suits you. Would I get it? No. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, so I guess it's personal preference, really. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about Tattoos, anyway, in any way, just, yeah. just like... Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna get a tattoo, just because I was young and, you know, but then... Like, I've know waited, I, yeah. I've waited. I'm so since, glad I didn't. Yeah, like, since I, I was 15, 14, 15, I was thinking of having a tattoo, and then it took me literally 11 years after that to, to do it. Actually, and I think, it. and I think it's, it's, you know, it, it, you do have to make sure that you take the time because you know, like everything in life, you know, it's not it something you should rush. Exactly, yeah. no, exactly. Um, I, it, it's just one of those things that you never know. You might change your mind tomorrow. But if 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 if, if the idea of having a tattoo of this specific tattoo of this specific design or or, <coughs> or, 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 or you know a uh, picture that you want to have it. Give it time, you know, so you make absolutely sure that that's where you want to have it because after you, you you've done it, 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 it's it's there for life. Yeah, you yeah. know, you can't you can't you can't take it away. But you know, I, I it's still in the back of my mind trying to think to answer your question earlier on if I had anything like uh, mm. uh, I can't think of anything really. I really cannot yeah. think of anything. Um, I generally can't. But what about a fear? Like a like I have a. I have a rational fear of a shark, as we like saw mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. bar. Oh, I, <laughs> but I, I, like, yeah. I do have a genuine fear mm. in open water of sharks. That's just genuine. So, do you have any fears? Would you say? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the sea, I, the I, sea yeah, just the sea in general, and and, and waves. Because when I was six years old, I was with my parents uh, just on a holiday, and. Um, in Brazil, they, they, they put up flags <coughs> to, to tell uh, what the current is, if the beach is, uh, is fine for you to just go on a swim or if it's really dangerous. Say no. beach? Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> I go to the beach. I'll go to the beach. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I was in the beach with my family. <laughs> 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 and the waves were. Yeah, and the waves were. <laughs> It was it was a black flag basically, yeah, yeah. and um, and that means it's just not it's not it's not good for for a swim. It's just it's just don't go in the water. And me and my dad basically the sea was just went in, and me and my dad was just basically just walking, and then this very strong wave came and uh, basically hit me, and it was just like. Rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling. And, and, and There's no control when the water. No control, is, man. Water and that was like it it, 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 stick with me in such a bad way, you know. And and I was I always feared about that. So water for me, open sea. It's it's not something that I. I we're so vulnerable in open sea. Yeah, yeah. But but like for example in Portugal when we <coughs> were there, I felt like so good. Yeah. That was like kind of like missed so the waves. Good. You came honestly, man. <laughs> You don't believe us. I don't know you this. You don't believe us, man. We were... There were some serious possible. waves. That was just a lake. I can't you believe were, it. Oh, man. We were, you came... It, they must have known you were coming because the waves were like, oh, we want Carl to have a good holiday. I love the fact that we were talking about it uh, days after that. Um, and 
and you guys are just like, girl, you must believe us. You know, we, we like, were going like eight yeah. foot in the and air. I'm like, we were. No way. And then you guys thought, tomorrow, tomorrow you're going to come back here yeah, and the waves will be here. But they no, never they came. never came. <laughs> they never came. There's no word of a lie. Such a good holiday, man. Such a good holiday. Yes, now, I was telling Joe, man, we should plan something for August again. Definitely. Hopefully, yeah. Definitely. Man. Uh, August comes. And, and like, you'll be, you know, because last, our last holiday it was, it was unplanned. We all just kind of was like, we all made the decision very close to the time, so if we were to sit in now and go, it would be much better to plan, you know? Mm -hmm. and like, but it was fun. It, it was, was fun, it was great, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Portugal is just amazing. That that yeah. part of the world is just, <laughs> the food, right. the people, everything, yeah. everything, everything so oh, good. We feasted out there. We man. feasted out there, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jack, let me go for uh, a few, uh, what I called roller coaster questions. Oh, here we go. <laughs> go, uh, so, 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 so the first one I've already asked you actually if you have any morning routines or rituals. So you, 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 you yeah, you, you told me Fruit. that. Fruit. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that really boring. boring answer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yoga. I do yoga. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. No, but but it's it, it's it's interesting because um, uh, you're saying like every day is different. I mean, I I do have a, a, a routine in the morning. You know? What's your routine? Um, that, that's exactly what I do every single day, man. Regardless of where I am, obviously if, well, if well, what do you do? What, what? I get I, I wake up right uh, normally between seven thirty eight o'clock. <coughs> uh, I stretch and while I'm in bed, I do a few stretches for my back, a few yoga positions, yeah. back three minutes, uh, very simple. Uh, I tie up my curtain, open the window, uh, drink two hundred ml of water, <laughs> just beside the bed, drink that toilet, do my thing, back in the room, get changed, get ready for a run, like put my, my running gear on, then I sit down and I meditate for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, it varies. <laughs> uh, after that, get my phone, put my headphones in, listen to a podcast, on my way down to the kitchen, when I do my breakfast, and my breakfast is every morning the same thing, pretty much the same thing, you know, uh, it's a big, big smoothie, like with loads and loads of things, super, super healthy, uh, I have fruits as well, yeah, in this movie and uh, 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 this side of this movie as well. And then after that, go upstairs, check my emails, um, <laughs> stretch, and I go out for a run. Oh, God. So I do I that know. every single day. Obviously, sometimes, you know, for example, if I have a job in the morning to do, uh, the part of like uh, going back to the room and then listening to, uh, checking my emails and then going for a run, that might be postponed for later on, yeah, on yeah, the day. Yeah, exactly. But but the part of like uh, waking up, stretching, opening the window, drinking my water, toilet, back in the room, getting dressed, down in the kitchen, listening to a podcast, make my breakfast and back up, that happens every day. That happens, no yeah. fail, every single That's day, nice. you know. Uh, and that kind of like sets, uh, 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 Sets sets me sets the mood for the day in a way because I just recently and I think it's very powerful as well. I just started to kind of like say those mantras to myself. Like I wake up in the morning. Last year I started doing it. First thing I do, alarm goes off. When the alarm goes off and I'm about to open my eyes, I smile. <laughs> I put a smile on my face. Hey, smiling you know? is good. Is smiling is good. And then uh, while I'm going downstairs to have breakfast, um saying to myself I'm, 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 I'm making myself believe uh, for no reason that it's gonna be a great day things will be great uh, I'm very positive I'm very smiling I'm gonna have a great attitude towards people even though sometimes it might be challenging depending on what, what are you up to um, but I, I I'm kind of like trying to implement that more and more because at the end of the day it's all about dealing with your mind as well isn't it it's telling yourself uh, to kind of like try and behave and and and, and on the note of that, like one thing, because obviously from you talking about it, I obviously then remember certain like. So for example, I, nev I yeah. never, I um, <clears> never, <throat> I never look at my phone straight away when I get up. I don't sort of when I get up. I don't look at social media. I don't go on Facebook. So until I'm up, until I've made my bed, that's when I check my messages, because I think. Um, just, I just don't. You know, that's you know for for you know as we're talking about it. You know, now I'm sort of thinking, oh, actually, maybe I do do certain things. You know, I, I don't, I don't watch TV. I don't watch the news in the morning or anything. So, 
and like you said about smiling, I don't necessarily like do that, but certainly every day is a is a is a new day to 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 just go. If you had a little bit of shit happening, whatever you know, like. But you are a smiling guy yeah, naturally, no, right? Thank I mean, you, no, because I like to I like yeah. to think so. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I do sort of I do. You not think positively. You, you, you're not you're not a moody type of character. I can be very moody. No, we all can. You know, it's a natural thing. But, and you know, is life is a lot more. Life is a lot more fun, and life is a lot more kind of. Well, let me just make a mad link. You know, as we're taught, as we've been talking about loads of topics, but acting. Yeah, if I'm going into the room, I'm going. I'm not going to get that part. I'm not going to get it. I probably ain't. Probably not going to get it. Do you know what I mean? But if I'm going, even you know, there's been a few characters I've gone for where I've gone. You know, this character doesn't. It's hard for me. It's not. It's, it doesn't suit me very well, you know. Just because maybe it's a little bit too old for me or something, you know. Anything, I still give it a good whack, you know. Give it a good try, you know. Or boxing fight. If you go in the ring and Mike Tyson always said he was like he beat people before he even got in the ring. Mm. You know. I remember him in his documentary. He was like, I keep looking in his eyes. I keep looking in his eyes, you know. And he's like, the minute you know for that one tenth of a second, the guy looks away. He's got him. You know, and, and, and you know, he, he's so intimidating out so you know. So it's like but yet if an opponent What's the documentary? It's called Tyson, Tyson. Part Eight. It's a beautiful documentary, yeah. man. And and you know, I'm obviously a fan of all or I mean, any boxer that steps in the ring, any any sort of, you know, person who, I who watch does it. it. Honestly, Carl, I, I mean it's a really good um it's a really good documentary and also little fact about it, mm. Mike Tyson at the time was going through rehab, so he was very honest and he covers some very very honest things in that documentary the documentary is piled together with him talking sitting on a sofa talking and uh, archive footage so it's Amazing. very much him narrating it you know him narrating with pictures and popping up you know and it's is it online anywhere uh, i don't know i have the dvd I i'll have to try it. it might be might yeah. be I'll, I'll try and find it. if i don't find it, I'll, I'll just yeah. message you and then next time you come around if you can bring the dvd i'll bring the dvd well if you bring the dvd can i play that on a on my playstation 3 yeah yeah you can, you right? can. i was just thinking that now <laughs> where am i gonna play a dvd <laughs> 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 macbook Pro doesn't have a dvd uh, um, uh, device in it anymore built in so well i was just crazy right where am i gonna watch a dvd <laughs> yeah, PS3 work. PS3, PS3 works, right? Work, yeah, yeah, great. Haven't haven't used that for ages, man. Jesus, all all online these days. Um, God, I was going to ask you something, and I was just posed a question. We just yeah. Was it on no, the, but, but was there was on some the line of that. It was on the line of that, but never mind. It will come back to me at Maybe some it'll, point. Yeah, it will come back. Uh, right. So another. Okay. This is the Pro very first. Casa Grande's roller coaster question. There you go. Yeah. This is actually the first one because oh, the okay. other two you already <laughs> like kind of like answered in a way or another. So, uh, what would someone who doesn't like you say about you? Oh wow, wow! Um, um, that is a that's a I mean, that's a hard question for anybody to kind of be put on the spot. So, bear with me. Um, someone who doesn't like me, say again. Um, what would someone uh, that doesn't like you? Uh, say about you say somebody like that anyone, yeah, like is anyone, anyone someone that just uh, 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 bad mouth in you for example if someone that you know known you for whatever reason or been a, uh, a work colleague or uh, or just a, a colleague in back in school so, someone that knows you uh, maybe not even that well but mm -hmm. like would just come to somebody and say ah, I, I don't like Jack he's a bit like this you know what would what, what would you make the or maybe uh, if you could be, because uh, I think that's a more personal thing. Sometimes yeah, people, yeah. sometimes people, you, you, you might not even have that person, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is a great thing. Or, no, or perhaps you're not aware that you have that person <laughs> that would think in such a way. But then uh, if you yourself be honest and say, for example, I would say myself yeah. that some people, especially back in, uh, back in the day when I was uh, 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 singing, being a singer, you know, um, I would get a lot of the time because... Uh, I would finish a gig and then if I was on tour, I would have to kind of basically finish the gig and, and go sleep and rest for the next show next day, you know. And some people would see that as a sign of arrogance, you know. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, arrogant. Yeah. He comes off stage, doesn't come and speak to the fans, doesn't come and, and talk to anybody. And if and if I do... That's if like I a did, double thing, do you know what I mean? It's like... If I do that, I would be very quiet. 
I wouldn't be the norm, my normal self because I, was, I would be trying to save my voice. There was a lot of stuff that outsiders uh, don't see it and don't understand. So some people would say he's, an, he's arrogant, he's, uh, uh, he's a bit uh, uh, of a snob, he's got, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that that people would say. So, for example, in my case, I think people would say... Uh, I think I've got mine now that mm. just from li listening. I think maybe, certainly when I was younger, um, when it came to, I think people would say, someone who perhaps wouldn't like me would say that I can be quite, um, I'm trying to find the word now, like, not aggressive, but let's say, because there, there's been times where, you know, for example, back when I was in school and we were devising our plays, you know, as part of our theatre studies, I was very much got to a point where I would probably be, I would not, I would lose, which I, I like to respect people. I always like to show respect, but there have been times where I've had to just be like, can you just, can you just do that? Mm -hmm. And I've been quite aggressive with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe people would say that I'm arrogant in that sense of like, oh, he thinks he knows it all. Do you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if I can try, because that was quite a, that's a question that certainly when you haven't thought about it, it's hard to answer on the spot, you know what I mean? I know, yeah. Because um, you're right, it is, it is perhaps a personal thing, and I think as a person you, you might not know someone, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's, it's a way, it's a part of life, you, you're, not, you're never going to, never going to impress everybody, or not, not everybody's going to ever like you or be fond of you, but a lot of the time you might not even know why though, do you know what I mean? And, and it, their reason might be completely different to what you think it is. And, and people might just perceive you in a way that uh, it's incorrect. It's like, it's, in, it's like impressions. You might meet somebody at first and have an impression of that person um, and, and, and make up your mind and create a label and label that person mentally just for yourself. And for example, you, you meet somebody and then you have like, you exchange a few words with someone, a friend of a friend, and then afterwards you say, oh, I like him. I just like him. Or I like, or I like. But I mean, well, I mean, how, how, how do you know, how much do you know the person? You don't know the person. So it, it, it's very difficult to, uh, to, 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 to put a label on those things, yeah, to, so, to, yeah, to exactly. say, you know, oh, he is arrogant or he is not. And people do that all the time, you know. People, I mean, you, you might be on, on a bad day for whatever reason and then answer in a way that people around you might be like, new people, people that don't know you, uh, be like, oh, he's, he's an arrogant ass. You know, mm -hmm. But the, you know, they, they might, like you say, not actually necessarily take the time to, to know you. Do you know what I mean? And I think, I think that lends itself to even us two here, you know, as in, anybody in our lives I'm sure we've had people in our lives where we've gone oh, I'm not really fond of him or her and stuff and when actually if you maybe but there also there is some people that you just aren't compatible you know yeah. some people you just you just they're just not going to ever be your mate mm -hmm. you know and um but you know you, there's others that you just haven't actually taken the time to know them and equally they haven't taken the time to know you um but you know certainly as you get older and certainly as I have I have got friends, but I've also got my really, really close friends, you know, and I, I put you in that bracket, mate, honestly, you know. Oh, like, mate, thanks, man. You know, yeah, appreciate it. We've always been, we've always had a nice, and we're getting to know each other better now. Absolutely, you know I mean? yeah. But we've never, we've always been honest, we've always had honest talks and stuff. I remember, again, mentioning Portugal, I'll never forget that when just me and you just chilling there, you in the water. And we were just like with the waves, with the wave, with the hitting waves, waves yeah, with the, lack, the waves. very lack of waves. <laughs> and essentially, it was zen. It was just like it was. there was no movement. But it was at great because we were having a we were having a great chat, great chat. And, you know. And we were, you know, like there's 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 people that because certainly with myself, I have different kind of friend groups, you know. I and but I also think that's a really good thing. Like I have, I have friends that I can talk really deep with, and on a real sort of. I guess you know, for use of a better term, but like spiritual level and and, and talk about life, if you will. But then I've also got my mates that genuinely, they're like, I don't really talk about acting or at all with them, but that's actually quite refreshing, you know. And like, they're all like, oh yeah, yeah, he's in Peaky Blinders, so we won the match. Do you know what I mm -hmm. mean? It's yeah, like yeah. we don't really talk about it, but I love that, you know. And like, I don't know how we got onto that, but you know, I, I friendship great. is a very, uh, I care about it a lot, you know. And I'd like to think that certainly 
certainly as you get older, because you learn the more you get older and stuff. And I'd like to think that anybody I meet, I'm honest, and I they have a good representation. They have a good uh, understanding of me. They mm -hmm. they get a good impression. Hopefully, I'm not definitely wouldn't say that. I'm sure there's people who haven't, you know. But I'd like to. I'd no like to make the effort. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I think uh, I, I always thought that to myself, you know, as, as years pass by, um, that the people, for example, like 10 years from now, for example, can you see like yourself 10 years from now, uh, you will be doing like, I'm sure you will be in a very, very good position with, with the world that you are, uh, that you are That's in now and, you, and you're and you going forward. Uh, but it's a very tricky world, you know. I mean, Absolutely. it's a very, very tricky world. I mean, people come and go, and as long as you have a good team. People but, but the more the time will pass, like say 10 years time, the more you will remember, like uh, like just now, you know, or maybe, you know, like yeah. for example, Chester had in Portugal and people that you've known <coughs> since you were a kid. You Things know, like people, grounded. people that, because uh, 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 when, People always say that when you when you riding on on the top of, of, of the crest of the wave, you you know things come so easy to you. So does friends, isn't yeah, it? Exactly, yeah. Like uh, and, and and I take what you said. Like I have people that are like friends, for example, that um I, I don't have any. I mean they're my friends, but I don't have any uh, uh, spiritual or very deep conversations. We just don't click on that level, and and that's fine. That's all good. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. But 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 then again. Um, something that I learned as well. They are, those are friends, but like when when you really need to talk to somebody, you will want to talk to somebody that you can connect if that's something that is meaningful that to listen. you. Someone, that, Someone will that will listen and will somehow understand. Like when you want to talk about uh, 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 personal feelings and uh, talk about uh, subjects as you know, um, perhaps so, so something outside of the the. the technicalities and practicalities of life you know you want to go deep into a subject you don't want to talk about just like oh I just want to unwind and have a chat about whatever guys you know um, so though these kind of people kind of become really really close to you I, I certainly you know uh, uh, for me it's it's crucial to have uh, friends that you know if you're feeling down you can just call and say hey mate yeah can I just come around you always have pizza and can I just have a chat yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think and there's there's loads of different things you know there's there's the kind of even within that there's the friends that, like you say, you'd even within them close friends that you have chats with that is very personal. You do it in different circumstances. Like there's there's some friends who, for example, like you've never been to my house, but there there's friends that would naturally come to my house. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and yeah. Just just because they 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 always have and stuff and sure. Um, but then there's others who you'd have a beer with. You know, mm -hmm. like but within that realm of of them close friends that you can talk personally with. And those things evolve as well. Like people, yeah, I exactly. mean, it, you know, people. I mean, it just it, things just evolve. I mean, friendships uh, that last, uh, they evolve. You know, they they, they never stagnate. They never stay uh, uh, stagnated. And and and, and friends, uh, real <coughs> friends, I, I I tend to to to, to say. Um, Sometimes you don't see the person, man, especially in my case, you know, because I grew up in Brazil and, and lots of my, my childhood friends, I mean, I don't get to see them like for, till I go to Brazil, which I do once a year. So I don't get to see them for several months. And sometimes I don't even speak with them over the phone or WhatsApp or we just don't talk. But every time that we get to see each other, it's like nothing has changed, you know? Yeah, Everything is the same, you know? Whereas all the people sometimes just grow apart. And, and I think that's just natural, the natural course that's of really life. Yeah. Um, what's your oh, roller coaster again? Roller coaster again. <laughs> Back to the roller coaster. What's your view or, or views about uh, money? Money. Um, I think certainly when it comes to money, you see people's true colors. You know, if you lend someone money and they don't happen to pay you back, perhaps, and then they make. Do you know what I mean? You know, see what I'm getting. I think basically with me I, I, I can say it but like I always how do I word it <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best way to word it but basically like I don't I, I don't want anybody fucking with me when it comes to money <laughs> do you know what I mean though because something as common as something is as, as, as wasteful as money if you will should never lose something 
that's powerful, a friendship, let's say. Mm -hmm. You know, people that I know have lost value, people I know have lost family members through money. God, I know. No, no, it's just like, and it's just what a stupid reason. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think we all need money to survive. We do, you know, and like I would love to be that guy. Like, I, I, funny enough, I read, I watched an Andy Hopkins, and I love Andy Hopkins as an actor. Oh, same. You know, and I, but it really, it was, it was really nice and to watch. You met him, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. Wow. On, on the, you know, <laughs> um, on, and um, he said, like, in interviewed, like, obviously, I was not, you know, not quoting him, but it was around the lines of someone was going, "Oh, do you? Wh why do you act? Do you do it for the the, the art?" And he was like, "No, no, it pays well." <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, um, and 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 certainly, I I love that. I, it's a refreshing thing to hear, you know, from someone who, you know, and as much as you need money, and I hope I'm making sense here. Yeah. Certainly, if I link it to myself, a life I don't I don't need money. I don't need to be rich to be happy. I don't need to be. Do you think you have that limit? Do you? I mean, do you have for yourself? Because I, I, for example, uh, I know. Um, there were some, some deep questions on this podcast. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. That's um, good, though. That's the idea. Um, I know myself that uh, whenever I reach certain things on my life, I yeah. will be fulfilled. I'm not going to be like, okay, now that I've got the house, the car, just as an example, yeah. and uh, yeah. now yeah. I want a boat. And now that I will have a boat, I will want this and I will want that. So you... I know basically if one day I have a thousand pounds, you know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be very happy. That's all I need to fulfill virtually all my X amount of things. X amount of things. And if I can make it eleven hundred, if I can make twelve hundred, that's that's all nice and good. But I will not sacrifice in order to achieve that family, friends, exactly, yeah. my health. Which I yeah. think it's what happens to a lot of people. I mean, because obviously the more money you make, the more things you have, the more it costs to maintain, and then you get addicted to that kind of life. And when you realize, man, time is, I know a lot of people that, man, God, they have a lot of money, but they haven't traveled. They haven't seen the world. So I'm like, dude, what's the point? They've got land, they've got a house, they've got stuff, and it yeah. costs stuff. But essentially, <laughs> that, yeah, that, that, but that is also one of the, you know, when it comes to money, it's a lovely feeling to not have money problems. Do you know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. Well, obviously, I'm, I'm not saying I. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. far from that. But like, to know that you get it even start small. But to know that you know, if your mate invites you to the pub, you can you, afford. You can it. afford it. You know, and then you know, it's all gone holiday. You can afford it. That's a that's a beautiful position to be in. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to have a Ferrari or the biggest mansion. You know, like. Yeah, but but, uh, but 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 what I'm saying is um, discerning all this and be a, being able to um, to l literally like put a, put a limit somehow, you know, put a limit somehow. Like for example, um, everybody wants to own a house. Everybody wants to you know not pay rent. That's I think uh, the number one thing for any individual on the planet. You know, you want to have place that you can live that you can you know decorate with your own stuff on your own way and you don't pay rent for that it's it's yours it's your sanctuary perhaps <coughs> you can put it this way um i'm sure that you know <laughs> everywhere that i lived it was always like a sanctuary especially my room was always like wow this is my sanctuary um uh not uh, uh, uh diversing too much from 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 the yeah. point but um having like an idea you know like okay great yeah one day i'll have a wife i'll have a house i'll have a certain amount of money that can afford all this can go on a holiday can do this can do that and that will be great and then i will keep doing i, th I think perhaps actually that let me just rephrase it when you do what you love i think that kind of like goes out well, of the window work, as well yeah. isn't it it's, it's, it's not, not work, work because you're enjoying it so much uh, and you appreciate it, I think. You cherish it more, mm. you know, like... But not many people are lucky enough to, yeah, exactly. to, to, to make a living out of something they, they, they truly love. It, it's a, a blessing 
Absolutely. And then again, to but to use the the word again, when you're in that position where you're lucky enough to be doing it, to be living it, that's why I believe that when people sort of get carried away, get sort of you know arrogant, you know, or whatever, you know, and and, and sort of splash and and, and and have coffee with money and stuff and whatever, that, that's a very lucky position to be in. So as much as 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 long as you can when you're getting all these privileges to remember that to remember the people that were there for you before all that and to to remember the certain things that kept you grounded i was uh, yeah I, I wanted to actually uh, 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 point it out uh what you just said jack like uh i know you and i can i i mean i would be i don't think it would happen to you i don't think it will happen to you because it's just, I mean, you know, when you have a feeling, right? I have a feeling. I can, I, I can see in your eyes, and I can see uh, within you. But, but man, life is crazy. You never know. Tomorrow, you might go, you might land a job in Hollywood, which I hope you do, and I truly believe that you will at some point. And and things might just go like super, like you never know. Like you never know exactly. One year, one year you're the hottest exactly. guy in fucking British Vogue, you know. And <laughs> the next year you can be, you know, but, 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 but do you know what I mean? Next year you can be like the front cover of, uh, of, of a Vogue America or something like that. And then things might just go absolutely crazy. And, and we are all humans, you know. And uh, regardless of how prepared we are, regardless of how good our families are, regardless of how well surrounded we are, things have a, he, on this particular business of acting of uh, 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 of music arts arts in general they have a huge potential when they go big to go big and to f mess with with the one's mind you know uh, and uh, do you do you think about those things perhaps do you try and like uh, uh, imagine yourself on top of the world on what you're doing and then perhaps like my goodness how am I gonna handle this do you ever talk about it perhaps like on your w w with your mum or with your agent like just just random chat no, over a pint I never really talk about it but but on the note of that I do do you know what? I do trust there's certain people I have in my life and my agent and my mum and my dad they're they're you know they're part of it and I have I have a, a lot of people in my life where if that day ever came where things are getting crazy you know people are, are blowing smoke up you you know what I mean everybody's s telling you how great you are and do you know what I mean like mm -hmm. it can easily I can totally I totally totally agree with what you just said and you never know until it happens and until it comes you know but I'd like to think that I have enough people around me where if they ever even had a hint of me doing indulging in, in, in doing anything that's out of character or anything that is, is very related to what's happening in the career like everybody knows who you are and then all of a sudden you start being you know a different person I feel like I'm I have enough people there that will that will that will take me straight down to to the bottom and go just like remember who you are and for example my dad and uh, this is like my dad said it my agent has said it I mean they basically was like oh, my mates have said it it's like I've, I've got a few slaps ready to happen if if I ever if I ever was an arsehole mm -hmm. like in in a way of like being cocky and, and do you know what I'm saying like Absolutely. what we were just talking about of mm -hmm. like forgetting respect and forgetting who you are and abusing money and abusing things and abusing your power and, and, and abusing your image um, I've got enough people that will give me a clip around the ear you know good stuff good so stuff. not necessarily talked about it but definitely have in that way mm -hmm. where it's like yeah no I, I, I get it and, and, and I generally don't think uh, I think you I, th I think uh, things tend to come and land land uh, <laughs> on on uh, on 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 people on the right to the right people and and I generally think that man you, you, you from what I know about you I think you, you, you've got it, you know, you've got it. You're a very clever, very, very clever guy, very talented guy, and, and I'm sure you, you will handle whatever Thank uh, you. Is, gonna get, is gonna get thrown at you, and, and I, I generally, generally believe on that. Um, and likewise, man, you've got, you've got, you know, you've got your things coming your way. You've had so much experience. You've had a journey. You've had, you've wow. had, you've had yeah. a journey, you know, yeah. so 
and that journey is going to keep it's 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 going the right way so likewise with you bro amazing thanks jack uh i'm not done yeah i'm not done i still have i still have a couple of roller coaster questions for you let's go again <laughs> some tokens left you know? <laughs> My all day ticket. Like, My all day ticket, right, yeah. And the Wonderland is closing <laughs> soon. Yeah, shit. It's closed already. Yeah. Um, what kind of food do you go for when in need of a treat? Something that you think of like, I know what, oh, shit. today I'm, I'm just gonna fuck whatever, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna go for it. Um, I'm asking that as well, and I'm thinking, I'm dreaming of like, a box of Krispy Kremes, 12 of them, yeah, yeah. and pizza, all yeah. for myself. Oh, uh, right. I haven't done that for like ages. I feel guilty these days. I seriously do. So for me, it's a real treat. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's a real, real treat. Um, I love having, so the, the link I can make is, you know the days when I'm filming stuff, obviously they put you in an apartment or they put you in a hotel. Um, when I was, what I love doing basically is when you, but I very much I very much treat myself this way when I'm actually doing a job. Um, I like going to maybe McDonald's, KFC, Chicken Cottage, any of the any of the chains like that, and just getting more than I'm gonna fucking eat. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> just getting cheeseburger, you know, chicken legends, everything. Do you know what I mean? Huge. Piece. But then keeping it in the bag and like going back to your actual apartment or hotel that you're in, putting on Netflix and having it everywhere, and just sort of uh, not, yes, not, not yes. having to eat it, you know, uh, honestly, McDonald's, KFC, all that shit, in a hotel, mm -hmm. I love that, man. Like, you it's can take it back and just put it all around the place and just, oh, man, that's, that's, that's the answer to that question. That's what I would really treat myself It's with. a perfect answer. I can absolutely relate to that. You know, for me, one of the biggest pleasures I have in life, you know, from all of the things, it's when I do a similar thing to that, buying, for example, a huge 20-inch pizza, for example, yeah. just for myself, just for yourself. and I have the whole evening off, I turn oh, my man. phone off, have, have a my mode, have a few beers, <laughs> <laughs> watch something on, on, on Netflix or, or a movie, or whatever you know I'll tell you you know uh, I went through Peaky Blinders between Christmas and New Year's just doing that just chilling yeah. in the evening and you looking know, forward to it I would, yeah, yeah. I would, I would, uh, <laughs> not every day not every day but like uh, I was doing my no, yes every day yes every day <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my, yeah. my, my, my thing during the day and then I was thinking like oh my god I'm so much looking forward to the evening because I have no plans I'm gonna stay home very quiet and I'm gonna eat you know burgers or, 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 donuts. or donuts or something like that you know it's it's so so good it's amazing it's really really good but you know what the bur the, the, the uh, Burger King KFC McDonald's thing it's great it's yeah. great I haven't done it for ages because I, I mainly kind of like um, do they have like Mac delivery now Mac delivery oh yeah on, on Uber on Eats is it Uber Eats yeah yeah, yeah. so you can get it to your door <laughs> Nuts, right? That's nuts. <laughs> Twenty pounds worth of McDonald's is a shitload of McDonald's, man. <laughs> way oh, too much. Way like too much. Somehow you you manage to eat it all. You just you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I just don't love the feeling afterwards. Cause when I eat it at night, for example, if I eat a, a big pizza in at night, or if I eat a, a, a sandwich at McDonald's or, bang, or or hamburgers or anything like that, which I don't do it these days. In an hour, yeah. Oh, did you go there? Of course I did. I went Pink's Hot Dogs. Pink's Hot Dogs. Out. I went Five Guys. Did you, did, you, did, you, did you know about it before I mentioned it to you? Um, no, well, I didn't know what Pink's Hot Dogs were. Oh, this right. is, should we to say what, the, this is in, in America. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I, I went to America recently, didn't I? Like, yeah. For the first time. But like, I remember you sent me a thing on Instagram saying, you should go to these places, man. You know, like, <laughs> but I did, I, honestly, in and out man. I loved their menu. It was just like, and I got animal style. Yeah, animal style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? They have the secret menu, don't they? Yeah, well, it's like it's just. I in in America, everybody like sort of the people I was meeting and stuff. You know, obviously because they knew I wasn't like. I we haven't to, talked about that. Uh, yes. Yeah. How did that go, man? It's amazing, amazing. It was uh, it was the it was the best trip. That was it arranged was by your arranged by myself. Agent, yeah? no, by myself. I basically my agent was so I have a I landed a US agent uh, about. 
a month, two months prior, mm -hmm. and um, I was getting tapes sent through, and I kind of was like, I'd only ever met my agent in the US over FaceTime or email, so I was like, I really want to go over there, and it has so happened that my agent and his partner was going over there, and, I, and he was like, you should, you should like come at this time, because then at least for the first week you can be with us, you know how it all works. So then I was like, do it. I did it. So I put my own money into it, bought my ticket. Um, and obviously, because I gave my US agent a lot of notice, they set me up auditions here, general meetings here. I was wow. busy every single day. They even gave me a bloody driver. Wow. A lovely, lovely, lovely guy called Michael. You know, he works for the agency. He's on his way up. He's 23. So me being 20, him being 23, we were very much, we were, back, we were in a lot of bonding. Exactly. He kept, he took me to all the burger joints. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, yeah, no. And, and it, you know, I was only out there for two weeks. And I can, uh, obviously, I can't give any details on the projects themselves. But I landed two jobs out there. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing, so, Jack. And that, but it, do you know what? It, what was really amazing about it, it wasn't even... It wasn't even obviously the job itself was was the most it was the most amazing and it was the most amazing thing because I found out I got both jobs when I got back to the UK. Mm -hmm. um, but the most amazing thing was sitting there and going, man, I was over there for two weeks and I proved to the agency over there because it's UTA, the big agency, you know, and they do have big stars on there. I'm I'm obviously naturally, obviously they they give everybody priority. That's the you know they're obviously but like, they you know. There's a lot of bigger stars on them book on their books than I am, mm -hmm. so the fact that I'm very early days with them and I can go over there for two weeks and and land some things, it proves to them that we mean fucking business. Of course. It's like it's like I want them to be thinking, what if he was here for three weeks? What if he was here for a month? What if he was here for two months? And they go come back and like I was funny enough on the phone to them because they've just started up back in the new year at their so I've started just getting tapes back through and. And the agent was like, uh, oh, you know, it's we can't wait for you to come back. And that's what you want to hear, you know? Yeah. So it's like the jobs itself was the, the icing. Uh, cherry on top, do you know what I mean? Or well, actually, no, I'll say icing. And the cherry on top was proving yourself. And a funny little memory, I hope I'm making, like, you know, sense, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. like, one of the best moments was on my last working day. So my last working day was a Friday. When I was over there, I, I went home uh, Saturday morning, um, and I'd, I'd, I, one of the aims and things I wanted to do over there was go to like some of the sports games. Mm -hmm. So I went to a basketball game, watched the LA Clippers, and I went to, to watch LA Kings ice hockey. So I knew that was in the evening, so I was buzzing, right? And I had two, two, I had an audition and I had a meeting set for Friday. And on Thursday evening, right, I had three things added to it. They were like, oh, we, we would love to. These blah 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 would like to meet you and blah 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 would like to meet you. So I had two general meetings added to it and an audition for a project. And they were like, Jack, I know this is like short notice, you know, it's quite a bit of material to learn. Do you mind? I'm like, that's why I'm here. Here for that reason. But it said it over. It said it over. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and then literally in the evening, I read two scripts, which take a long time, do you know what I mean? To, to be prepared for the meetings. And I learned uh, six pages of script. For a thing, you know, all in this wow. evening, I was like, but that kept me motivated, you know, it kept it kept you on your toes, and to know that no matter what, it's your last day, you've smashed it. It's like let's smash it some more, you know. Ah oh, man. And just the fact that I went home with all them going, okay, impressed, impressed. Yeah. You made you that made was the most important thing. Um, that's the, the highlight was in and out, bro. <laughs> Because all it, all, all it, <laughs> it's always the highlights. What a way to link it back. I never I went on a little tangent, and I, just I never just do it. Never open a branch over here. I know, it's yours, well, man. It's a. It's you funny know that they did a couple of times, like in North London. Does it work like, though? No, no, no. For, like, it, yeah. But like for for a few hours, they would be selling like I don't know a certain amount of burgers. Doing the burgers on a very tiny little kitchen in a very tiny little place, and yeah. it would be a big buzz. If you go on Google and you just Google it, in and out in the UK, it happened I think a couple of times in the past. I always okay. uh, learn about it. Yeah. No, I always learn about it like days after it happened, and people would be queuing for like city hours in the morning just to get a burger at twelve. I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> But, you know, you always wonder why they never actually open a branch over here. Uh, but I'm glad that you liked uh, Pink's Hot Dogs because it's such yeah. a legendary place, you know. Well, that's it's on where Melrose, it's off Melrose Avenue. Yeah, yeah, that's so where... Um, the longest street ever. 
Mm, it is, yeah. No Rose Avenue, man. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's long, man. It's long, it's long, yeah. I, like, I love riding over there. It's great. Oh, man. It's, oh, man. And then when I was over there, it was so hot. The walking it's a down great place, roads. isn't it? I well, love LA. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful place, and there are uh, be- uh, beautiful people. I mean, like, I Do you think uh, that in the future, perhaps you would, I don't know, relocate there for a while to kind of like push your, push your career 100%. forward? Definitely. I want to, you know, I'm. But you I love, think I love British projects. Is that is that is that something that you think you, is going to happen it's uh, fairly soon or no? Nah, nah? Well, you know, it's a. I love it's a British natural projects. Course. You know what I mean? I, and I kind of the best thing is I basically the dream is to make it over here, mm-hmm. to be a name over here, and I'm getting there. You know, be established, get some good projects under my belt, and then go over to LA as a complete unknown, which mm-hmm. I did do. But you know, people might know who I am in within the industry terms you know I'm certainly far from the level of being recognized on the street but in terms of industry I'd like to think that you would were you not recognized on the street I mean I'm like, an odd time odd, odd time, time. Like born, born born to kill like no nah, not really you know because because I look a lot different because I tend to not that the style of hair I had in born to kill is not how I have it mm-hmm. obviously I dress differently yeah um, so there's a lot of variables there which but I did get recognized the odd time you know, and uh, but going over to LA, I'm a I was a British guy who happens to get a few jobs in the UK and going over there. They love great Grayson, don't they? They love it, man. I yeah. put it on. I was like, I love I love West Hollywood, man. You know I, mean? I was like, you know, I went there Melrose. <laughs> went that was it In and Out? <laughs> like, so cool. But, uh, you know, it's uh, I would definitely basically I want to. The aim is to. Yeah, of course I'd relocate there, but home is always going to be London and then England, you know, and, you know, that's where I live, that's, that's where home live. is, you know, yeah. but when I went over there, I definitely fell in love with it. I fell in love with the energy, I fell in love with the, with everything. Mate, talking about earlier about morning routine, see how I said I normally get up at blah, blah time, you know, let's say nine, you know what I mean, like, it's in between eight and ten, you know, <laughs> <laughs> mate, over there, seven more. Six thirty in the morning, sun shining, balcony, and I was like, "No, no, this is." I get you, but like, what a beautiful way to wake up! Sun shining through your window. You have a few meetings today, you have a few auditions. Let's do it, baby. You feel and it's like yeah. you're like, you know, and, and when my UK agent, because I was with um, I was with my UK agent and his and his partner, the first week, and then they went home, so I was on my on my own for a week. Mm-hmm. Um, but with them for the first week, and and the best thing they said to me was like, oh, I, I can see you like shining. It's like you're in your element. And then like when they left, I was on my own in LA to you know get the Airbnb myself, you know, and all that all that stuff is uh, makes you. It's a proud feeling because it's like you did that. Mm-hmm. No one else did it. You invested your own money. You know. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely, Jack. It's 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 man. It's I know I know the feeling. I know the feeling. I know I know uh, uh, how uh, amazing it feels to um, achieve stuff that not that you uh, stuff that you believe that you could, but then you actually did it. Did you actually did it? You know, and I think it's a it's a fantastic thing. Uh, one last roller coaster question. Uh, very easy well, one. We've had, well, we've had a great, uh, fruitful chat, may I add. We we did, we did, yeah, absolutely. It's been it's been fucking ace. <laughs> way longer than 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 expected, but that's amazing. That's <laughs> yeah. just how it happens, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, are you reading anything at the moment? Reading. Yeah, reading like a book. I read scripts. You read all scripts the time, all the yeah. time. I read um e- every script that comes through. I read it. So, uh, the last book I read was I read the book for the project um so yeah there's a there's a a book called spontaneous and i know they were making a making a film um, based on the book um you know uh it's essentially about a, a, a girl it follows a girl and people just start spontaneously combusting blowing up for no reason wow sounds so crazy i know but you know, obviously, I don't want to give too much. I know that there's, you know, I'm I'm speaking purely for the novel, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's about, in a nutshell, people just start blowing up. 
that never gets explained why. Physically blowing up. Yeah, blowing up with their gutted blood and guts everywhere. Just blowing up for no reason. I loved the book. And I loved it even more because I was, you know, that was a project that I perhaps was in, well, I was in the running for, you know. And, um, whether I end up doing that or not, it doesn't matter. I still enjoyed the process of research, if you will. And because... I love the script so much. I want so I read the script, then novel, then read the script again. Wow! So it was like, um, but like I had an I auditioned for that project out in LA. So, and obviously since being back in the UK, there's there's I'm in a mix for it, if you will. Mm. I can say that. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I read the novel, and it was that was the last thing I read. But I tend to read scripts all the time. Last script I read. Hmm, well, I've got two to read tomorrow. How many pages is that? The one, well, they're in the hundreds. No, that is, but that's on like the phone. You read script on the phone. Oh, okay. Still, you don't need, you know. But, but, but yeah, but, but like, how, how can you, how, how can you read so fast? Do you have like, is, is Oh, it takes me a good, good two hours to read it. But I always need, I want to read it, I need to read it. And when you're reading it on your phone, do you manage, I mean, do you turn everything off so you have no distractions? Yeah, flight mode. Flight mode, mode. Okay. Flight mode, telly off. Um, because reading script does help a lot, you know, and when you, when you enjoy it, because I know that reading script sometimes can be a ball ache, especially when it's like you ain't got much time, you've kind of got maybe 10 or so pages to learn, you kind of want to prioritise, but then I think, how can you prioritise reading the scenes and learning the scene when you don't actually know the story a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. So... Because there are a lot of things that I've I've started learning the script and then I've uh, uh, the the scenes and then I've started reading the script and I've gone, oh now I get it, now I understand what that is. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's the um, that was the last novel I read. Spontaneous read scripts all the time, but there's also something that I'm hoping I'm in the running for something um, that is a novel and a book as well. So I'm hoping that, you know, even if yeah, I land it, you know, if I don't, we, we move on, you know. But that will be the next book. But I'll keep, I won't say what that is. <laughs> I'll hear about it. I'm yeah, sure I will, sure. I'm sure. Jack, my man. Mr. Cassidy. Ah, man, this 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 has been so much fun, man. Thank you. This was Thank great. You for having me. No, no, man, it's no. a pleasure. It's my pleasure. I, I, I knew it was going to be something interesting you know well, first and ever podcast for me so yeah first ever podcast for me with you yeah. and i'm sure you're gonna do plenty more in the future if, yeah if, uh, if, if our voices aren't annoying people <laughs> <I'm not>. <laughs> <laughs> amazing jack thank, thank you, you so much thank you and i wish you all the best Likewise. all the best i'm sure man there's so much good stuff coming your way and just stick being who you are you know this genuine amazing you like too, pure thank guy you. you know and and things will just keep coming your way man you were very talented and i mean i just came across like i obviously met you like via joe and and i didn't know anything about your acting career and i was like hey, no, well, I, i'm just gonna check whatever jack does on born to kill and i was like whoa that's oh, that's good no, shit no, no. Oh, no, <laughs> and that's no. way that's way yeah. after portugal yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah just thank crazy. just thank you for you know, it's it's uh, just thank you for. I know that you know you have a very sort of great mind and a, and, and great knowledge and a great you've got a great quality with people. Do you know what I mean? You 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 really you're great like that. And I'm glad that you've made the decision. You've 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 started this doing this podcast. You know, and, and thank you for having me and me being one of your original guests on here. It means a lot to me. So thank you. Thanks, Jack. My pleasure, my man. Awesome, <laughs> dude. Oh, two man. hours. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Thanks, Jack. Like that it? was great. Fucking hell.